welcome back to the All Right Podcast. Remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an All Right Podcast. Guys, here we are with another episode, and I have a special guest now. And I don't mean special as in special. I mean special as in... Maybe I don't. I never. I never thought. I never thought I'd actually get you on this. That's a god honest truth. And um, before I, before I um, say your name, and you this? sorry, you what? <laughs> what <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know. What? It sounded like you said you have jaundice. There. I have like, jaundice. <laughs> No, yeah. I don't have John this, so I can make that clear. Um, <laughs> but anyway, yeah, before we get started, and oh, I introduce oh man, you're you, looking a little yellow. I don't know. Um, I'm, I'm half Chinese. Hmm. Oh, okay, I can't right. do that. I can't do that in this day and age. Um, but anyway, yeah. So I said on previous podcasts before, I mentioned your name a few times too when I was really? interviewing uh, filmmakers because they were asking oh. who, who, who they they were asking how did you get started, and I'm gonna get into how I got started. But your name, I mentioned your name. Every single time since God name Marcus Rochford, he's the one that mm-hmm. kind of uh, showed me scripts. He's the one that showed me Tarantino films. I, I remember yeah. them when you would, I would sit in your house or watch Richard Pryor, and you, you're the one that showed me Richard Pryor for stand up and stuff and all. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So, um, yeah, guys, I want to introduce this guest, and his name is Marcus Roch- Marcus Rochford. Oh. Jesus Christ! No wonder you sound like you said John. This fuck's oh, sake. Fuck's sake! Sorry, I do fucking start and fucking. I'll, I'll, it's like I'll, I have I'll, a stroke. It's like I'm having a stroke. Me water. We'll just, skip, we'll just skip the introductions. Hello, uh, internet. <laughs> Hello, how's it going? You. Uh, yeah, Marcus, internet. please give a bit of an introduction of yourself, please, to the people that don't know you. Yeah, so my name is Marcus, uh, and as I'd like to say, I make good movies every day. <laughs> that's it. Like, I have nothing else going on in my life. Right. Uh, yeah, but like, yeah, just, I'm a guy that likes making movies, you know? Mm. I'm a guy that loves film to the, the heaps. I'm drinking at the moment so like what times are now like seven o'clock day drinking lovely come here it's all right it's people that start at one i'm not shaming it's all right it's beer, it's beer o'clock always in my lovely. household um, but <laughs> i've yeah. got problems i'm an alcoholic <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> right so we're gonna start off with um younger years no trauma or anything i'm just gonna start off with younger years and before, i'm going to ask this, you do you not have a, a co-host no for this um, i have a co-host for some of them uh, james Bourne. Sometimes okay. I have him. Um, sometimes he's available. Sometimes he's not. So he's literally he's not available today. He'd rather he's watching this right now. Like when I upload this, he'd be watching this. So James, you'd rather play your Nintendo Switch than fucking do co-hosting. So get off that thing. He hasn't stopped playing Nintendo Switch. That's, so because this would have been funny because in the dynamic of my podcast, the, the one that uh, I do with Kevin uh, Nostalgia Horrors at uh, NostalgiaHorrors.net. <laughs> That's not the website. Don't look, there, up, yeah, uh, don't look up NostalgiaHorrors.net. Oh, I have exist. it here. I have a lot of topics about it here. Don't worry. There's a lot of, there's a lot of pornography on NostalgiaHorrors.net. This doesn't relate to us. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, like it would have been funny if you had your co-host on, and then I'm the co-host of my own podcast, and I just would have had like, a little co-host, uh, co-host yes, off yeah, yes, between like you and your guy. One fucking job, yeah. Exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be trying to take his place, and he'll be trying to take mine on <laughs> the respective podcast. Um, right, yeah, go on. <laughs> yeah, sorry, so the younger, the younger fucking years. The younger um, days. So, your interest in films, and so what age did you start getting an interest in films, and like, You've had the question going to yourself. I want to make films myself. What age did I start that? Uh, I I would say it's about fifteen. The age of fifteen. Hmm. I can't really give a a spot on year and day, but I do remember when, hmm. and it was uh. See, I you know, as a kid, that's still now. I, I didn't have many friends, hmm. right? Uh, now I'm saying that. I did have friends, but like they were into stuff like Call of Duty. Yeah. They're into stuff like you know Fifty Cent and you know all this you know Eminem and yeah. all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, you remember the days and everybody was like, "Hey, I am a, a black a gangster that got yeah. shot fifteen times. Look at me, look at me." <laughs> I did, I wasn't like that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I and I like gone through like my own separate musical and kind of phase phase things. You know, I was big into wrestling. I was big into mm. uh, Nirvana and you know grungy punk music i still am i still yeah. i still still love it but uh like since then everything's kind of exploded where all my taste buds have just gone mad for everything you know mm. what i mean like i've gone through several different phases since then but film kind of came to the point where uh i had like three films that i can say 
were personal uh, discoveries that led me to want to become a filmmaker. One of them was uh, like this, this uh, 80s movie. It's really, uh, well, I wouldn't say it's kitschy, like it's, but it's a, definitely a cult film. What you call it? It's called Highlander. What do you want? And it's I about, haven't it's, seen them. Uh, Highlander. It's about, uh, it's about a bunch of people who are immortal. They can't die. And they fight each other over the centuries to see who's the best by using swords and chopping each other's heads off. Right. It's great. And it's set in the 80s and Queen did the soundtrack for it. And it's actually, it's actually class film. Hmm. Uh, we reviewed it on the podcast. I think it was like the 10th or 12th film we did in the podcast uh, where I, 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 I went into the whole in-depth like, oh, how I found it. And, hmm. Oh, how I, how I love this movie, even though it's kitschy and it's a bit dumb. Uh, the other one was the first film that I kind of knew off by heart. From like every line of the film, every like scene, I knew I, it, every beat of the movie that was coming up. I knew exactly what was going to happen, and I, I watched that over a hundred times. And that was a uh, Scarface, yeah, the uh, Al Pacino Scarface in yeah. nineteen eighty three, and uh, that that was like a real big turning point because it, you know, I didn't know that the film's uh, kind of thematic purpose till later down the line, mm. yeah, you know, where it's, it's it's kind of a uh, critique of the yuppiness of the 1980s and all that and it's a you know, big belt of excess I wasn't uh, in on that mentally I just like the fact that I was doing like big mountains of cocaine and fucking shooting people with a big massive gun yeah that's how it started off and then it kind of got a bit more deeper and uh, shit so uh, then the last one which was the one that kind of when I looked at it I said right this guy did this and I know that I can do this if I worked hard enough. Like, I want to know how this guy did this was uh, Quentin Tarantino's Reservoir Dogs. Mm-hmm. So yeah. that was the film that I watched. And I, I remember because I was, again, I was out in... Remember HMV in the Valley? Yeah, I do, yeah. I do yeah, or, 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 or I in the HMV in the Valley. <laughs> uh, and they had the, the box set, Tarantino box set, on sale for like, uh, and I was like a tenner, and I was like, oh, I'm going bargain. to buy that. I'm That's gonna buy that. I had all his films on it up until Kill Bill Volume Two on it, and uh, a lot of them were special editions. And the Reservoir Red Dogs was a two disc uh, special edition. I had all the commentaries and all that. It was a really, really fun DVD. But I just, I, I just started with that film. I didn't start with Pulp Fiction. I didn't start with Kill Bill. It was. And I don't know if I started with any of those. I would have gone the right path that I yeah. did. Yeah. Because it's uh, as cheap enough or is it as, as amateur enough as independent enough and it's as professional and well put together as much to, to kind of get the cogs in my brain moving that said this is possible hmm. you, you could do this so that's that's really where the the, the jumping point happened and then you know later on down the line i met a guy named anthony o'reilly outside at skill and he's yeah. covered in he's covered in the spot roonies and he had a dead haircut <laughs> <laughs> Did you know you had a Muller haircut, didn't you? It was like a bald haircut. Muller had the Justin Bieber haircut where people, what, That's what it was. Asians claim that, that they fucking done a forced, you know? Mm. Uh, Koreans and all, pure, it's like you, they done a forced. Pure spicer look, you and Ross Crowley spicer. outside the oh, scale. Oh, God. Ross was on a different level. He was a fucking... And I, I remember, what, like, if you want to talk about areas, I remember when me and you met before because I think it was you approached me yeah. and I haven't a clue why, but yeah. it was... Uh, we were outside the school. I was walking home with a couple of people, and it was the lights literally outside the school. If you know the if you know the grounds of, of where yeah. the school is, and all it's literally like a set of lights two seconds after you walk outside. Mm. Okay, you were there. And you're like, we're into the film stuff, aren't you? You're into the film and <laughs> the all. Pure all right. Yeah. <laughs> all right, boys. Yeah. I'll give you an uppercut. But you don't fucking help me out. That type of shit. I didn't know like, how yeah. to swing. Didn't even know how to swing a dig. <laughs> I'll give you an uppercut. Shut up, you won't do nothing. You take. <laughs> but. Uh, that that happened, and uh, you were like, "Oh yeah, I need help with this uh, this thing I'm doing." I was like, "Oh yeah," and I went over to yours one day. We talked about shit, and that was it, basically. Yeah. You know, I was doing. I, I ended up doing a film in the skill hmm. uh, for the film club, which really kind of set the fires alight. Film is shite, and I, I don't know where it is. Yeah. I don't know where the film is gone. Yeah. Did you not? But, did you not have like? Did you not get a copy of that, or did you? I, I lost my copy of that. I think. Yeah. And uh, it's probably for the best. Like you were probably like, oh, thank fuck now. Well, like, I'll be honest. Like after years, I was like, yeah, I don't care about it anymore. But now, like coming around to it, I think I want to see it to see yeah. where, to yeah. see where, like, why I did the choices I did. But, uh, it's, yeah. it's good. It's good that it's good that you can look back at stuff like that, and then the stuff that you're doing now or your latest stuff, and you can see mm. the improvement in it. You get me? So yeah, 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 exactly. And I would say that to every filmmaker is that even if you're a, like cringe or you look at a piece of work and you're like, 
oh man, that's so not me now. I'd still say keep it because some filmmakers would think it, like if the, the filmmaker didn't have a massive horrible time making the film, and you know the art maybe they got the film taken off and by the end of it, a lot of them care for their films like children. Mm. You know, yeah. very few directors have disowned their work, good or bad, mm. unless it was something that wasn't by their choice. Yeah. You know what I mean? And that's uh, a that's a good segment as well to go into because what you were talking about there is that me and you met up and I needed a help with this um, script. I wanted to write a series. And as you said there, that even if it's so bad, every every filmmaker treats it like their babies. And literally, this fucking Dead or Alive series, man, even though I watched it and I go, what the fuck was this? I still look at it and go, I enjoyed filming that. I fucking I had so seen, much fun. I haven't watched Dead or Alive in... Uh, in forever I actually last year. Yeah, I the last, year. last year yeah i'll be honest i think i think at some point like uh, there has to be kind of like a group call you know community fucking table read scenario where we go back to the first episode yeah. where it's you me casey and whoever else we can possibly yeah. get that isn't a knob now or isn't oh, come here. probably all knobs they're probably <laughs> they all fucking knobs yes yeah, so. I, I know casey waldron is definitely still a knob but he was like a knob when we started you know what i mean he's a knob at night yeah he's a See, knob at night he's a knob all the time talking about <laughs> You can call him up. He's like Novacall, you know what I mean? Novacall. Novacall. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. He does those infomercials where it's like, call me and you can see call me. Call me and you can see me, Nob. Yeah. <laughs> People that know him now are going to be like, what the fuck? But anyway, yeah, that's what I wanted to get into as well. Because from that, we, me and you, this is how we actually got to know each other as well. I, I had an idea for a series and I wanted to make it into... Um, I wanted to write a script, but I didn't have a fucking clue how to do it. And you knew how to do this, so you didn't even get me to write the script. Right? You you got me to watch the likes of Reservoir Dogs and Quinn. Like, you got me to watch that type of stuff. And then I had, like, when you look back and you think about it, the way I see it is, like, you probably showed me them films just to get a, like, um, a perspective on what kind of shots and you get me and what, like, story emoji or what story tell you can go down. And so that's from my uh, perspective, like... The, what I what I can tell you is this is that you you personally when you get an idea mm. is that you're you're like a a, a a dog chasing after a car, yeah. And what what my idea was is when instead of one wanting wanting to collaborate with someone on it because I I didn't feel like I felt disrespectful if I just said well this I can do this let me do all this and that, that's that's not how the way you go about collaborations anyways. Mm. My idea was that when you would. Uh, you know, see the because the other thing about filmmaking as well is that it's it's a it's research, yeah. and you know the reason why I watch a lot of films is so I can pick up on stuff that like is tropes where you don't fall into the same like holes that other filmmakers fall into, or you, you choose to do so. At least you know that it exists. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the thing was with you and that are alive is that yeah it was very it's a bit like even in the end of it, it was very similar to a, a copy of love hate or something yeah, like that that's why but, yeah that was kind of the yoke i was going for as well at the time because it was big at the time when we were when we yeah, were doing it that was, as well. yeah it was, yeah it was definitely at its peak with, uh, when we started doing it uh but the the reason why i'd show you other films is because well this is where not only love hate took x and mm. y from but it's also got the, the tropes of what makes a show like that or a project like that yeah like the genre that it is which is like the, it's the gangster genre mm. uh and then also is that it, it, when it came to writing the show yeah he, like nobody knows how to write a script because it's all about formatting Mm. Uh, I didn't really properly know myself even at the start of it. You had much more knowledge oh, than me, yeah. though. You had much oh, more about. I did, I was like literally, as you said, dog chasing a car. I just I just go. I wouldn't think. I just keep going. And I I wasn't stopping to think and learn and what's around mm. me. And so like you get me. And that's when you came in. You were the fucking owner that said, "Here, wait. You can chase that fucking car, but mm-hmm. I need you to teach it." the fucking road sense and what to do and how to do yeah. it and do you get me so you don't get hurt or you don't make a mistake that like the likes of that like yeah don't get run over as well as exactly yeah don't yeah. fucking do that yeah 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 but uh yeah like and what would happen then is when i would show you the stuff is that yeah you, you eventually did come around to the idea well oh hold on wait we can do this mm. Or we could yeah. do this, and when we came to writing the show, you had a whole you had the whole thing envisioned in your head about the direction it was mm. going to go. Mm. And I said, "Why don't you?" Because again, you know, you can come up with a vision for a show, and and I know from like experience, 
from writing scripts that it, even though the direction you go with it might be good to you, <laughs> it's probably it might not make sense to everyone yeah, exactly, else. You know I mean? Exactly. Yeah. And and uh, and I'm not I'm not saying that, that, that like it's not a bad idea. Here, man, you can slag that all you fucking want. It's been years. I'm not gonna I take a grudge. So. You can say uh, anything. I'll, I'll be honest. Like uh, again, uh, the, the direct it was never finished. Yeah. That's probably the only regret. Poor Casey fucking fighting Jake, and in a, in the fucking cemetery and all and. Yeah, the, you, the you, amount yeah. of people behind the camera in the cemetery. When you look back at that, if you try to do that now, like it's it's so fucking disrespectful. Like it's just a, I have a different point of view and a different view when making films, you know, because yeah. I made a film shot called The Lotto Ticket, and that was so fucking fun to make. Um, mm-hmm. but, Classic movie. It was so it was so different from Dead or Alive, and from watching Dead or Alive to watching um, another thing I fucking done all about sadness and fucking eh, the way I always done to the mm. fucking interview that I wrote and then the low ticket you can see the progress along the way and it's getting mm. better and better to what I can do anyway mm. that's my top standards I can do at the moment until I learn more do you get me? yeah right. and yeah, and making that our life was uh, in effect a kind of weird uh, learning curve for both of us because I learned particularly during the making the first episode because I was on camera for the first episode. Yeah, yeah. I was the D. I was the DOP, and kind of, uh, I wasn't co-director, but it, it's kind of the way that like I think you were because we you did have we did have we did kind of share ideas and we went back and forward, and um, yeah, even if they weren't always like, like like going oh yeah I like that I like that it's it's I it, I would it's, consider it one of them. It's like, it's in the way that like uh, there's a film I I watched. Uh, I'm a big fan of called Performance, mm. and it has two directors for it. And the ideas that they took on was that one was blocking the camera mm-hmm. and the other was blocking the actors. And to your people that don't know this, blocking is when uh, it's the placement of the camera and the placement of the actors within the frame. Mm-hmm. So one director would go and talk to the actors and go like, oh, what do you think you think this character's feeling and where, where do you think it's going with that? And that was your job mm-hmm. on Dead or Alive. And mine was like, right, you stand there. Yeah, here, yeah, this yeah, is how yeah. the camera's going to work. Here, this is why it's expressing this, that, and the other. Mm-hmm. It's not... Like I make a sound that we did it professionally, but like yeah. when you look, oh, that, fucking like, hell. there's a I'm gonna leave a link there. down the description to the fucking the playlist, please. If you if you haven't seen the classic Dead or Alive, the first thing we've ever done, the first thing I ever done, and that we ever done together, please go watch it because you'll have a laugh, but you'll always, you'll also see like the difference. Honestly, like, honestly I think we should finish it. I yeah. think we should finish I, it. I don't think, I don't like the likes of Jake. Jake lives over in Australia now. So Jake, yeah, we, we uh, uh, he's bon voyage. We can get, we just get rid of him. <laughs> <laughs> he was, he was getting us views for the girls though. Like all the girls would come up and go, is he coming into it? And it's like, what the fuck? You're not even watching the story. That's the funny thing. Like so when I came up with the idea, like, cause you had like, again, you, uh, the, the, the map set out. Yeah. And yeah. then I would come in and be like, hold on. Why don't we just change this to this? And then the story would go in a completely other direction. Yeah. And then yeah. it would somehow, you know, but by the end of it, I, like we had, an, like, we both had ideas for what the end of it should yeah. have been. We we did, and, yeah, we did. And yeah. it just it never came together, yeah. sadly. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, it was. I I, I enjoyed it. Uh, but, yeah. We can get his colleague still around. He's. I can talk. I, I'm not going to say it on here. No, I can, but I'm just that. Yeah, after. Is he still, no, is he just? Is he still around? Like, oh, I, I, yeah, call him. Yeah, yeah call him. Are you still alive? I'm, yeah, I'm not alive. Not saying, is he dead? <laughs> like, is he still around? His, like, his character alive? killed himself in the fucking prison. Remember, so he, did, he, did he probably that, pursued yeah, his yeah. fucking character. But anyway, we shouldn't be talking about that. That's fucking just to steady. mention. Just to mention as well. Um, we shot that uh, pro- pilot episode for mm. that five times. <laughs> Yeah, do you remember we that? Because we the re-shot fucking... that fucking thing five times. The SD card that fucking corrupted. We lost the fuck. I'd lose it. I'd fucking. Oh Shin- my god, man! We had and then Shinizi uh, at one stage yeah, Shinizi, and Daniel Daly. Shinizi, yeah, yeah. Shinizi was the met was a uh, was planned to be the Casey. Casey's character. What the fuck? And I, I got, I got Shinizi involved because well, yeah. Shinizi was like, hey, I, I want to do acting. Like here, this is the project. Acting, me and Andrew. Andrew, Andrew, can I do some acting? Yeah. yeah. Fucking good old Shanisi. He's fucking like deadly, that. man. I watch, I, I, <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, I watch his TikToks. But anyway, um, yeah, the good TikTok he has TikToks. He's actually really good at it. Like, he's really funny. Okay. Um, but yeah, I'm not the good channel that was doing what's bits. it? He had a YouTube channel that was doing bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was. Um, I was texting him back and forward. I haven't talked to him in ages, and he was just asking, like, "Oh, what's this with YouTube?" He was asking me things about YouTube, and I was just telling him, like, "Just do this, do that." If you if you want to do stuff, but um, the good thing about that our live is, is that I actually have a 92 page script now for an actual film, but it's the same concept 
but it's completely different. Um, and it's more. Is it? It's still it's, the same. Phil, it's, like, it's, it's the same idea about the okay. four teenagers and so and they, oh okay right yeah, yeah, yeah it's completely different there's more there's, you'll see prisons you'll I, see I, I understand what you're um, but about. it's only the first draft so what I'm doing is I'm get, trying to get a team of me and five other people and we're going to do stuff like this and we're going to go through the script and we're going to change it get other people's opinions and once they know the story mm-hmm. once they know the joke try to try to do something with it because it, if you can if you can get if you know people that I know people now that would actually give me proper recording equipment and audio equipment and f- cameras, proper nice fucking 4K cameras. And I know it's not all about quality, but once you have the story there and it's good and the audio is good, but um, I, I, I know people now, I start building it up and I, I know people out through Instagram and, you know, I had them in my house and we were talking, we were trying to do things. So um, I have the people behind me that would do it. It's just getting that second and third draft done now. You get me? Like, uh, mm-hmm. like, like, like I'm is fucked. Like I mm. need people on me. Like you get me so. I need people. What is this? A, is this? Is this a ten or a five? <laughs> what am I doing here? Uh, but yeah, like I uh, like the I understand they're coming from for that, and like the the writer's block thing for me is probably the worst thing that I've mm. always had a problem with. Uh, I, I I as I said, I wrote a web series a while back that I sent a, a bit on to you. you know, and over here, we're gonna discuss it. I have them. We're all, dis- have all sticky notes here, buddy. They're all over the place. Right, well, 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 let's not. De- dive too deep within yeah. the web series canon but I just want to say like I am writing one but yeah. I, I think Corona is going to be the reason why I end up writing yeah. everything finish it all up hmm. because I've literally nothing else to do I, was, I, I, I taught myself how to use Premiere there recently hmm. you know I, I taught myself uh, what site do you use for scripts uh, actually I'll tell you now because I, actually... I have a website but I want to know what site you use and what I use for formatting and all that? Yeah, but basically when you're writing up scripts, it does it for you. Like, I have uh, Celtech. I use Celtech. Celtech is a good one, but the one I got... Okay. Uh, I remember you showed me one before, though. I, don't, I can't remember. It probably was Celtech that you were uh, showing. No, what I, I, I use one called Drama Queen. Drama Queen. Yeah, Perfect and, and you, you can use it for free. Mm. Uh, uh, it's, a, uh, it's actually can really... Can you collab easy. on that? Can you literally share your script and use it both right at the same time? Can you do I that? I don't think so with that yeah. I, I, I like i only did the trial and i, I write on my own and then do pdf send pds to people it's easier because then they can go through it at their own speed mm-hmm. like i sent the, i sent the, the script i sent to you to yeah. about three or four people and they all came back at different times with it mm-hmm. and one actually did a whole actually to read over it again uh, someone said the whole entire revision of yeah. the script like they went through right well this is where you made mistakes with grammar and spelling, yeah. and this is where I don't think it should work because in my in the web series the, the protagonist of it is female, and I would ask a lot more women on this case than I would men yeah. because she's specifically a female character. You know what I mean, mm-hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a look at the beard on me. I'm a, from I'm their a big, perspective, it'd be it'd be exactly easier. Yeah. yeah. It's all about making genuine characters for me and mm-hmm. uh, genuine worlds that you can then move in and out of and that you can then you know kind of do stuff with i'm also about it's, it's on paper at the moment but i'm also writing a feature film myself that's good i, yeah. I'm enjoying, I like that um yeah so yeah so we're gonna try to get off dead or alive because i knew that the minute we talked about we talk about it a lot um well yeah yeah you know and it, it was really good and i really did enjoy it um and i did say in other podcasts that if it wasn't for you i wouldn't be fucking doing this because i wouldn't have started of interest so nice one thanks very much no problem um but we're going to get into now that when you started college, you went to college and you've done film and television. What was I that did, like yeah. when you, when you started that, what was like that, what was that whole new fucking world that you've fucking learned so many things from? Well, I did, I did four years all together. Uh, I did a, a year doing television and film, which is where I kind of learned the basics, the very, very like borderline basics of both television and film. And I've still got a kind of familiarity between the two of them. But, you know, more so film, because I, I leaned on that side later on. Uh, finished the year there. It was good in Valley Fairma. And then I did a two-year film course at the same spot. And that's where I got really into the meat of it. I learned how to use film, uh, like the actual physical film that, that we don't shoot on mostly anymore. Uh, I made two shorts with that. Uh, I learned script formatting. I, I learned about arcs and characters and I learned about tension and contrast that create tension within the storyline. I learned about, you know, the filmic elements like shape and, uh, you know, distance and, mm. you know, the size and all that. And, you know, all these things that come together. 
that when I, I, I looked at a film, I could see like the language of it. Like it yeah. really comes to, like if filmmaking is a language at 25 frames per second, 24 frames per second. I don't know which one mm. we use yeah. in Europe. Uh, but yeah. It, it's definitely one of those cases where, you know, I'm looking at films now and I know exactly where to go. And particularly if they're using a script format that I'm very familiar with, that I'm like, well, this is the, the part where the character does this and there's yeah. another obstacle they create in order to make this and then come to the climax of the film and what's the point. And then it comes together for me where uh, I learn what the theme of the film is, which is the heart of the film. Yeah. The heart of the film is the thematic purpose. The question that the, the filmmaker asks and explores and pre- presents to the audience. You know, it's the yeah. what's it called, a hypothesis. It's, it's it's the question that needs to be answered. Yeah, I I I want to ask you this because of what you just said as well. When you watch a film, when you used to watch film and you you know you didn't know much as you know now, uh, like based on what you know now about film, is it different when you watch a film? Can you enjoy that film still knowing that? Like, are you focusing more on the stuff in the film itself that like oh he's edited this or this? this kind of cut off or this is good the way they switch the camera here or can you still enjoy a film uh it depends like um like most of the time yes most of the time i can do both uh most of the time i can look at a film and sometimes like i love a film so much that i i do go into the looking at every frame of it to see where the filmmaker is going because sometimes i i might get the theme of a film but sometimes it may be a scene or shots i'm like what are you trying to present here yeah. in the whole woven fabric of the film because again what i was taught with filmmaking is that like it is a three-act structure a you know character arc or story arc but within each scene you present there's also a miniature arc and structure uh, you know there's a beginning middle and end to every single scene uh whatever the ways that you present it is you know whether it's like a like a straight line or something less linear is up to you it's just how you use that uh, and like sometimes it, it depends on the film basically is what I can say because I would watch like Michael Mann's Heat with like Robert De Niro and Al Pacino mm. and it's one of my all time favourite films amazing heist movie uh, I'd watch that and I'd, you know, I've seen it in the cinema about three times now I've seen it on telly loads of times and I'd know why I'd still see new things about it but I'd know why they shot stuff the way they shoot it yeah and then comes to a film that i watched recently like uh like david cronenberg's naked lunch which is a really surreal really messed up uh body horror you know kind of uh psychological study into a character and i would like you know it has motifs in it that come back into it and i really like, like you pick up the motifs and the the arc as it goes along but you by the end of that, I still didn't really understand what the film was, and I was trying to stop myself from thinking and just enjoying it. Mm-hmm. So it all depends on the film. Like it all depends on the filmmaker and on what the filmmaker is trying to get you to feel, yeah. and how you kind of multitask with that. Because then there are some films that I've seen that I don't really give a shit about the structure yeah. of them. It's just kind of how, how they make me feel. Like, uh, have you ever seen the movie Arrival? I haven't. I want to watch it though. Um, yeah. the people that watch podcast, I watch a lot of podcasts I do and uh, they were talking about it and um, so I do want to watch it yeah like the Denis Villeneuve the director of that he uh, he, when that, he went he did a, uh, Sicario and Blade Runner 2049 he's going to make the new Dune movie but yeah, the Arrival so far is the best stuff that he's ever made for me because it's just, like one of the very few films that I bawl my eyes out watching Every time, like I cry, I cry my eyes out. To pee. I'm inconsolable by the end of that film, <laughs> yeah. and I'm like, why does this film? Why do I keep doing this to myself? Why? And <laughs> um, that was that was a good answer now to it because usually, like, I want to say that you are a good guest because usually when I ask people these questions, they have kind of short answers, but you go into more detail about it, so it's it's really good. I think it's from the podcast and getting used to your own podcast and you know that you have to talk for a certain amount of time as well, mm-hmm. is it? Yeah, well, it's that, and it's also the fact that I uh, I just talk shy all the time, you know? Yeah, fuck it, fuck it, it's brand. Um, but I, I, wanna, so. I, wa- I wanna remind you of something as well. I don't know if you'd remember this. I still have these two photos in my box when I moved into my own um, place um, a year ago. I 
I grabbed these from underneath my bed and I brought them with me. All right, I don't know if you know it. When you were in college, you needed someone to do a photo shoot with, for Blue Velvet. You were, re, you were redoing That's right, Velvet. yeah. And you made me fucking, I looked like a traveler in it with my haircut. I looked like, hey, Kevin, John, Kevin, going? Kevin, Kevin Green, who plays the, who's the, the host, the main host of the Nostalgia Horse, the podcast I do, he played the, the, the lead uh, central character yeah, for the for that photo shoot. So yeah. I do remember, but I don't remember the pictures now. You're gonna have and, uh, to show yeah, because I, I I have them there, but I'm fucking I'll I'll do the, I'll show them after the podcast. Okay, but, right. Okay. Um, fucking, I remember I had to stand in the field and I was like a detective, and I had I I find an ear that we had. To, yeah. Remember the missing ear, and yeah. I remember I remember going up to you, and I remember saying to you, sign that, and you're like, what? And I was like, sign that. Because one day you're going to do something that's going to get you noticed. And you were like, would you fuck off, man? I'm like, I'm telling you now, fucking sign it for me because I want money because I'm going to be homeless when I'm older. And I fucking, and you signed it for me. And I, I fucking, I still have them there, man. I, I, I still yeah, have man. them. Like, to get me so, um, I'm going to fucking keep them until the day I die. Like, because I, I just like, like I like the photos, you know, and it's a memory as well. It was a good memory. Um, mm-hmm. But as you, were, as you were saying, um, Kevin, uh, Kevin Green. I want to talk about Kevin as well because you started a podcast with Kevin, but also you started doing comedy se- sketches with Kevin. And even though you weren't comfortable in front of the camera, you were more comfortable behind the camera. You start getting comfortable in front of the camera when I watched these sketches. And I was like, Markish, this is fucking funny. Like, this is good. You're actually, you're good at acting. You're good at acting. Like, so I was like, what the fuck? So what was that like when you start doing the sketches and you, you had to go in at more? Well, uh, Kevin was already doing the sketches yeah. uh, at the beginning. And Kevin is, you know, I, I've said it all the time about Kevin and his kind of, uh, uh, like, how to put this without sounding like a fucking asshole, but, you know, how, how he underplays his own uh, genius, hmm. how he underplays like his own, uh, his, his own good work. Like he's a very good uh, comedy sketch artists i could say like yeah. he, he, you know the stuff he comes with up on the podcast mm. he's constantly going through that shit in his head mm. you know so when i'm trying to be super serious and like well this is the point of this film and all that he'd come yeah. in with a line like yeah so's your mom you know something <laughs> like that you know and, and you know with the comedy sketches that was where he would he would that was his outlet his creative outlet yeah and it was only when i came on was like because he i could see through his sketches that he was struggling to get a, a sense of uh fluidity with it okay. you know where you know where you'd shoot something and then it would cut something else and there would be something else there you know he would struggle to get with that stuff mm-hmm. and when i came in is that that's when i would uh kind of bring in a little bit of filmmaking stuff into it because just give a bit of motion yeah and i didn't under, i didn't realize that like i would end up being in the comedy sketches and then like when you'd write the sketches we'd both play off each other so there's stuff in the sketches that aren't actually written down yeah you know there's stuff there that, that would come out and we'd keep that weren't actually formatted and some stuff that we did <laughs> like that wasn't meant to go in the script that didn't make it in because it was really dumb yeah uh, but there's definitely stuff that like when we started doing the sketches i, I can agree with you that I, i'm not the best on camera yeah. i don't really feel uh i don't like looking at myself too much yeah. on, on, on a monitor or anything I'm, I'm a bit better now but back in the day i wasn't yeah uh, self-consciousness or whatever you want to say it's the reason why i went behind the camera mm. but uh what would happen was that me and Kevin, like how I would get better is that me and Kevin would just forget that the camera's there. Yeah. You know, we kind of realize that we're these characters and we're these really dumb characters. We'd come in with, with it and there'd be like a part where I jump behind the couch and he'd go, whoo, and then I'd have to yeah. say something really dumb. And sometimes his line was like, oh, but I really miss you. And then sometimes like, I, I, I would change that to like, well, I, I haven't left since you, since you left. Yeah. <laughs> but it was good though. It was good. There was good chemistry there between as you could see it. And yeah. um, I don't know I, if 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 you want, you can talk about it. But I don't know the reason. I always want to know the reason why you stopped making the sketches. Uh, mostly it was because of uh, college, for one thing, hmm. and two. I think me more so is that I wanted to focus on other shit and write other shit, and I, I'm not a good comedic writer. And there was yeah. also the fact that we had we had a uh, Kieran Coyle involved as well, and that, not nothing against Kieran, it's just that. He brought in a third wheel dynamic where we would all be sharing like different scripts yeah. about stuff, and it kind of just got a bit too much overwhelming for mm. balancing that with college. Yeah. And Kevin kind of lost his little spark for yeah. uh, in the end. So like when it, uh, when Kevin did have five minutes to do something, which was a you know a couple of years down the line, then 
uh, after he finished doing the television course and we uh, me and him linked up again. Like we were still friends, we still hung out with each other when I was doing film, he was doing television. Like we mm-hmm. you know, still went for, for dinner and stuff like that. But the podcast started because uh, we had our uh, dissertation projects to do in uh, college. Yeah. Uh, in the, the one year course we did for our degrees. Uh, Kevin's idea was a podcast that you call the nostalgia horrors. Uh, yeah. I'm not. I'm. I'm. A, I'm like Captain Kirk to his to his Christopher Pike. If you want to yeah. give that nerdy reference right there, yeah. Star Trek. <laughs> Go on. Uh, <laughs> but you know, uh, he had a uh, Claire on, who's a good friend of ours, and she was on the first episode, mm. and that was for the project. Yeah. And then I just went to him and was like, "Do you want to put me be on it?" And he's like. Yeah, sure, fuck it. And it was that episode, uh, which I can't even remember what the fucking episode was, yeah. but it was that episode was the one where me and him started doing the podcast, and mm. that was the kind of roller coaster that came up there. Because then I said, well, we should we should watch this film. We, mm. we, we can watch this film, can't we? We can watch yeah. it. And he's like, sure, fuck it, whatever. And yeah. some of the films, like, Kevin's up my eyes, too. And sometimes you have shit podcasts where, like, we, we pick a subject matter that didn't really get a reaction from us. Yeah. Yeah, you know, like we did, we did a, uh, a review of the film back in the early days. Uh, Angel's Egg was called. It was an anime. It's a really good film. But mm. the problem with it was that there wasn't a lot there in regards to us to communicate about. It was too surreal for us to kind of go, "Oh, crazy surreal shit." And then you have uh, like a case of the Emoji Movie, yeah. where we didn't even watch yeah. the full fucking movie, <laughs> and Kevin. Over. Kevin lost his shit. We didn't even watch the fucking end of it properly. Kevin lost his shit midway in between. I lost the will to live uh, by the end of it. By, by, well, whilst we were looking back on it, I, went, I, I cannot do this anymore. Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, that made really good content. And also, like, then uh, you have, you know, cases where Kevin liked something uh, and I didn't. Yeah. Or vice versa. And that's where we play off each other. So, like, yeah. I think it was the Holy Mountain that we did, like this really mad surrealist film from like the nineteen seventies. And like, it's a guy who plays Jesus, like a for- or a guy who looks exactly like the- Jesus. And there's a bit where he's like deitized and thrown into uh, like a bunch of different models to sell off for yes. you know for for profit. And there's a bit where he's carrying one of these like a cross, stops. Uh, and eats his own face. What the right? fuck? Yeah, yeah, it's great. Great <laughs> film. Great film. Uh, but Kevin hated it. <laughs> yeah, I thought you sitting there going, what the he fuck hated is this? Goes, and he was just there going, at the, in the podcast, he's there going, I don't know why. I, I, why, why does this shit keep happening? I don't get it. Stop! <laughs> and I'm there like, yeah, man, this movie's class. I wanted, I wanted to talk about it. So you basically said everything I was going to ask him because I have it down here that on Facebook, you made a Facebook page, uh, Nostalgia Horse. Uh, yeah, um, if I'm it's, I think it's Sketch Tacular. Yeah. That was what the, the sketch show was called. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I don't know how we haven't changed that yet, but it's, mm. yeah. It was you you have 136 Facebook followers on it. So you have, you have a good bit there. You have 122 episodes and your first episode actually aired out on the 12th of October, 2017. I think, I think it was that. That was, or, that was or, Sensei. That was uh, Sensei in Riverdale. That was the woman that cleared it. Yeah. That was, that's not, that was the show's first uh, appearance, the pilot mm. episode, if you like yeah. to call it. Yeah, and uh, and then my episode came along like the, it was the week after that, mm-hmm. and I still what the fuck what fucking what what one was it? I can't even remember what, <laughs> which one was. Uh, I, I yeah, but it was it was a, a it's a really good thing to do. Uh, I didn't think I would end up liking it so much. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I didn't believe that uh, I would, you know, think of it as because even now because we we, we uh, only re- recorded an episode there on Sunday. Mm. on zoom because we were <laughs> on hiatus yeah you uh, didn't have the work. last uh, the last um episode you done was probably the 18th of march i think it was uh, you haven't yeah done it it because con- I, I i had to research all this up i'm looking at all the information up just so i can get a better understanding and so and sometimes when i was would be in the gym or something i'd i'd listen to it i would listen to it god honest truth and and so yeah. like that um but yeah that's that's what i kind of wanted to ask about that but you, yeah you had the answers for them already so that's that's good uh, that you kind of slided into that but yes. i do um before before is there something you need to show me before we need to move on to the next I'm thing i'm just i'm just checking to see which what the fuck was my <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> this I'm, is not I'm, getting cut out you are all just watching I'm, this I'm very confused like I'm just kind of like hmm because I remember watching Heat I remember watching films like Society I love Society if you ever get a chance to watch Society watch that I, will. If I, have uh, a, I, remember, I remember we came up with memes for Starship Troopers our last oh my episode my god hold on while you're while you're looking that up do you remember when me and you went to the cinema with people and we went to see Dwayne the Rock Johnson's film and he was like how do you feel and he goes I feel like I hit rock bottom and me and you were the only two in that cinema missing ourselves laughing and we were just and you were just making up loads of fucking jokes with loads of (laughs) that to him I remember do you remember that I I only remember that now I remember that yeah that was was San Francisco what was it San Andreas. Oh San my Andreas. God. Do you remember that? San Andreas. That's it's a really bad movie. Don't watch it. I feel like I hit rock bomb. Oh, we fucking died laughing in that cinema. Oh, it was so, so good. good. And I still do that. I, like, before this quarantine started, every Monday, I still go on my own. Every Monday, I go to the cinema and it's only a fiver and I watch films and I can't wait till this thing is not well it'll, i don't think it'll be back to normal for a good while but you know when we're allowed to start going into cinemas again and so i, I can't wait because that's that was my monday night i loved it yeah. i i mean i love doing that as well and i i did that monday night <coughs> thing as well if i was going to see a film that was only playing in the the view in liffey valley i would definitely go and see it on the monday uh i think the last time i went to the cinema no, it wasn't. But I think the second to last time I went to the cinema was you. I found which episode I started on the podcast. Right, go on, go on. Troll 2. All right, Troll man. 2. Troll 2, right, is an amazing. <laughs> so yeah. so bad it's a good movie. Like, Do you remember when the, the James Franco movie came out, The Disaster Artist? I do. It was, it was a funny film. Yeah, you remember, like, it, like it, it's, about, it's about the story behind the room. Yeah, he's, yeah, 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 yeah. Well, Troll 2 is a similar scenario. Like It's like The Room, but like in the 1980s, because Troll 2 isn't actually a sequel to the movie Troll. Right. It was a movie called Goblin, right? <laughs> and it's about a family that go to this town on like a, a, a house swap. Yeah. They go to this town called Nilbog, which is Goblin spelt backwards. Right. Lovely, <laughs> original. But the, 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 whole, the whole town is like, these goblins that they like they, they, they feast on human beings that and they have these interdimensional powers and the kid the lead actor in the story keeps seeing his ghost grandpa who's not real but has see it's great who has secret powers in it and it's all oh, so fucking good and like it's permeated by like the meme of uh what's the fucking meme uh oh yeah you won't piss on you won't piss on hospitality i won't allow it because there's a scene where the the, the family are eating all this green Horrible looking green food. Yeah. That looks terrible. But they're eating it because they're hungry. <laughs> so the kid makes a, makes a decision just out of nowhere. It's just like, I must do it. I must do it. I must do it. And he decides to piss all over the what food. What the <laughs> fuck? The you don't see him piss on it. It cuts yeah. right before he pees on it. But his father then picks him up and he's like, Look at this. Look what you're going to do. And he, he brings him into the room. And the kid's like, What are you going to do to me, daddy? He's like, He's there fixing his belt he's like i'm tightening my belt so i don't get hunger pains <laughs> you, you won't piss on hospitality that's i won't so allow mad, it isn't it that's fucked so, up that's so that's good fucked up. i love it yeah right so i gotta go into the next one right <laughs> on, uh, right so you've made um I, I, I looked through the films. You have um, a YouTube channel that you put your films up on and so like that as well. And yeah. I want to, the ones that I name out, I just want you to give a nice description to it for the people that haven't seen it. So I want to ask about Mind. What was Mind all about? Uh, Mind was basically about overthinking. Hmm. Uh, that was the, the idea, the concept that kind of shut it off because I'm, I was still am, but like at the point in time where I was like, you know, a bit scared about writing something. Hmm. Uh, I was overthinking about a lot of stuff and I, I came up with the kind of uh, metaphorical subject of a guy who's trapped inside his mind. So I, and I'm a big fan of, I'm a big proprietor of monochrome. I like, I love black and white film. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to shoot it all in black and white, but I kind of came up with the contrast of the worlds where a guy's trying to do something, big obstacle, like, you know, wait for somebody's waiting for his gir- for a girl that he really likes before he goes on a day, goes into his own head, Mm. and kind of has his own battle within yeah. his head about the thoughts about the stuff that he's going to do yeah uh, and that's the film basically the film is that and uh it's, it's him kind of ba- having b- battling his own internal thoughts so 
when the moment comes where he actually meets the girl, he doesn't like fumble over himself or he doesn't ruin it deliberately. Yeah. yeah. So, that's what mine's about. Right. Yeah, well, uh, all these, if it's up to yourself, if you want me to leave all these in a link down below anyway, if you want people to go yeah, check I mean, them out. I, so. I, I link, link the YouTube channel. I think yeah, uh, I'll link the YouTube. Fair. So if anybody wants it after this podcast, go, it'll be down there. But the next one I want to talk about is the one that I, I, I watched and I forgot we even done and um, I was in it. It was a student mm-hmm. film for you and it was called Unknown. Now, I watched mm-hmm. it back and I was like, what the fuck? I, don't, I, I couldn't even remember this. Do you want to give a description about this? Yeah, so, yeah, well, how Unknown was is that uh, we had... Unknown kind of started off as me and you in your mad kitchen. Oh, right? Jesus, Jesus, yeah. Um, I actually have footage on my camera of you editing the footage that we really? shot on this. Yeah, I do, yeah. It's, Mate, I, it's, you need to send that through WeTransfer if you, if you can. I don't, I, see, I can't get it off this because it's not in the memory card. It's on the internal memory. Oh, I don't right, know right, how right. To, so next time I ever have the camera, I'll show you. Please, but, yeah, yeah. Please, there, yeah. But definitely, there's, a, there's only a small piece of video of me because I remember because you took the memory card off me yeah. to edit your stuff, the, yeah. the stuff on the, the computer. And I, I, I took a video of you just fucking like editing shit on fucking Movie Maker. Yeah. Uh, oh, geez, do you remember that? We used fucking Movie Maker for that. That was mad, Mark. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. So that was in the video, and I was like, "Oh shit, I, I, I did shoot that." And it's just you going on the computer like this, and then I, and you turn around and you go, "Stop filming me!" Even though I probably knew you were fucking <laughs> filming me. Yeah. So there, there was that. Uh, but yeah, unknown was basically footage that me and you shot on a, a day where the two of us were born. And we were like, "Right, what are we gonna do?" And you were like, "Came to like you had this concept of a guy, and he." He's kind of depressed about himself, and he, he yeah. kind of wants to take the. That was the big team and... back then, wasn't it? I was For always you, yeah. depressed. Yeah, it was yeah. very. I was going through my own personal shit, so I yeah. think that's the most that related to me. Fucking the waves, hell. the waves. But, uh, and then yeah. uh, what I did was that we shot it in black and white. It was kind of like a really shitty looking, you know, I, I'm so artsy student film. Right? Yeah, it was, yeah. And it was it was that, and you know, you're like, oh, I just want to do something today, man. I just want to do something today, you know. I just want to, just fuck it, man. I just want to. I don't know what. It was like I was fucking high on cocaine or something. I just needed to do some. Like, yeah, exactly. Fucking mad. And so what was is that me and you went off. We went up the road to the little park up the road from here. Yeah, yeah open uh, car, yeah. Open car, yeah. Yeah. We shot that. Shot some of their alive there as well. Didn't we? we did indeed, shot, yeah. Yeah, we shot a sketch as well or something like that. Yeah, yeah. Shot a weird sketch. Uh, uh, but we definitely <laughs> shot stuff there. And uh, that was the kind of the... We just That was it. That was the end of it. Like, you yeah. were kind of editing stuff on it. And then you kind of... Uh, I think you just put yeah. it on the back burner. Yeah. And then one day in college, when you were in the college... I was in the room. I remember this. I was yeah. in the room. And I think one of your students or something, someone, not your students, one of your colleagues or some, someone who literally just said, is he, is he gay? Is he frustrated because he's gay? Like, is he, remember that? And I was like, what? What? Do you remember? Nothing wrong with gay people, just letting everybody on, but I'm just saying, the, remember the fellow was like, is he angry because he's gay? And I'm yeah, like, oh my God, that. the truth. And I was sitting there happening? like, I, I, was, look, I, was, I was sitting there when he said that and I was like, you know what? That could be the case. You're like, no, it's not, case. no, it's not. No, it's not. Don't focus on it. Don't, don't, don't. Let's focus on it. Oh, oh, oh big God. man, big man. I, I already had the, how are you, boys? The fucking, yeah. <laughs> hell yeah. So, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that was the, 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 I had the footage and for school, we had to do a project where we had to shoot something and then uh, do a, a total uh, soundtrack breakdown for it, mm-hmm. where you, every piece of music or a piece of sound had to be created artificially. Yeah. So that's where we, that's where I went with that. Like I, I shot the, the sound like months after we shot the footage. Yeah. Like I think it was the, the, we shot that footage in the summer, and then I d- shot the sound for that like near the end of the, the, the school year, which is like. Yeah. You were the uh, first one. You were the one to show me about sound and how you just, you know, if there was like, bo- if you need boards chirping or so, you just literally record it and put it into MT- MP3 file. And I, ever since then, I've been using stuff like that. I've been creating my own sound. And yeah, I would advise you if you're doing independent film, like something like that, you should develop your own. Like you can, you know, get it like a wild track library and Atmos library if you want. But hmm. you should always, uh, if you're around something. Uh, that you think you can get good footage of, I say build the library for it. Yeah, because it's actually it's actually better. You're better off having the library for it, particularly when you're you're editing your own projects. You just need like a little sound here and there. Sound editing, like all together, is a really really interesting process that I still know fuck all about. Yeah, but uh, I definitely know like how to put uh, put up a stitch up. 
yeah. uh, edit. You know what I mean? Like yeah. if I'm doing my own film, I know how to put enough together where it sounds shitty, but it could be cleaned up and fixed by somebody without much hassle. You know what I mean? Yeah. But yeah, yeah that that project unknown was just that it was basically I had to put together a bunch of shit, and you know, it's not brilliant. A, a lot of the people's work yeah. on, on that project wasn't brilliant. Yeah. I, I just had that footage there, and I wanted to use it, and I, you know, but and the name unknown was like. Again, something that just came yeah, after exactly, I looked yeah. over the footage, and that was it. Like, and I was like, "Hey, well, how can I make this into some sort of homogenous thing?" Hmm. That was it. Hmm. Yeah. So that was that was it. Like, and yeah, I, I actually quite like that project as a whole. Like, I like the cinematography. Well, speaking of holes, we're going into the next segment. No, hey, sorry, hey. we're going into the next. Hey, we're going into hey, the next. Will, will I take off my pants or <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep on, keep on. <laughs> um, um, but the next one is it's called Black Hole. Uh, apparently, yeah, Black Jimmy, hole, So, yeah. um, can you please describe that and what uh, made you want to film make that one? Black Hole was right. So, Black Hole was the the, the second year film project I had to do, and Black Hole was. Uh, I don't know what came together. It was just the, uh, I was, you know, we were learning script theory, uh, sorry, film theory, we were learning uh, script formatting, and uh, we had to write the script and talk to our teacher and kind of present it to him in a, in a way, and he would go through, like, well, this doesn't really work if this is happening and this character doesn't work, and what's the point of it? What's the point of you trying to explore with everything? And I, I, I quite, I, I, I love the way I was taught that way. Uh, with script writing like does it doesn't make you feel like is it pointful like what's the whole like, what's the reason for it and it all this is where it comes back to me talking to you the theme it all comes back to the theme and if you've got a strong theme that is concise and you know precise enough that you know you can read it and get at it when you look at the screen but not too ambiguous or not too, you know, wide ranging uh, that it's, you know, confusing and like you'll never get a film to work like that, you know, like the best way to describe it is like, it's, it's like, you know, me writing down uh, a sentence with 10 words in it when it could have been said with five. Yeah. You yeah. know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so it, that's where it comes in with theme. And a lot of film in general, like, you know, there's a definitely a lot of even professional made films that go on past their sell by date. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, Black Hole was that idea where I just wanted to explore something. And he said, you know, look at exploring something specific. And I always had this idea of exploring, you know, things that kind of related to me, you know, and guilt is something that relates to everybody. Yeah. 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 The theme of Black Hole, my first kind of pure exploration of theme, was like how does how does guilt uh, affect someone? You know that was the kind of the clear, concise point, but not too clear, yeah. but not too wide ranging. Mm -hmm. That was the point of the film, and yeah. it was about a character played by the one and only Brian Beatley. Mm -hmm. Yup, Brian. Yo, we love Brian. you. We, we we love you. We miss you. Come back. I've got. I haven't talked to him for a while. I don't see what he's doing. Yeah. We, we met up. We went up uh, a couple of weeks ago for a walk, uh, for a little little social distancing walk, where he kind of mm. caught up and all that. But he's been uh, he's been doing his own shit. Yeah, uh, training and Alex. He's a boxer. He's a big big man. I, I, I watch his videos. He's out in the park with his dad and so and they're yeah, yeah, learning yeah. stuff and all. Yeah, yeah. It's on his Instagram and all that. Go go, Brian Beatley. Young go check out the Brian fella. <laughs> go Brian, go. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we uh, uh, he was. Uh, kind of blank slate when it came to acting like he did yeah. he had no real acting experience but it kind of worked mm. because I learned because working with Kevin now like Kevin you know I've worked with Kevin on sketches and I worked with him on this that and the other and I I, I, I kind of knew how he did like your partner in crime man you've done a lot yeah. together you know yeah we've done a lot together but he, he, he kind of he he knew how to act a bit more and yeah. like knew how to like he wasn't an actor but he kind of had a more traditional acting, the basics. acting way in doing yeah yeah but he kind of knew how to act like mm. do this stand there you know he's good at that and mm. Brian was the complete opposite because I was trying to get a really solid emotional performance from Brian yeah uh, where I knew that the audience would believe his performance and I knew that the audience would believe that this guy's real that mm. was the that was the choice and all the actors in the film including Kevin including Kevin I, I garner as uh Amateur actors, mm. 
Yeah. So the film dealt with a guy who basically bullied a guy into killing himself. Mm. Right? Yeah. Uh, and it's about how he deals with that and how he come to grips, comes to grips with that where, you know, there's motifs between him and the things he did and, you know, there's a metaphor of, you know, the metaphor of how grief affects you where it's personified in like a mental black hole mm. where I, I had Brian in the uh, main room, the Anna Bretta Hall in the, uh, the media building in Valley Ferma where we had him in front of a, a spotlight and he was walking into it like a black hole. Yeah. Uh, and actually the, the name black hole kind of came from the idea that uh, internally and you know the metaphor of a black hole kind of sucking up your uh, yeah uh, sucking sucking up you as an individual you know mm. kind of changing uh, changing who you are because in a black hole the metaphor came from that was where I learned how a black hole actually works yeah uh, that's where the name came from like it actually I actually thought I actually remembered how the internal structure of a black hole works. And the, the, for, at the beginning of it, it was supposed to be that. It was supposed to be like a metaphorical journey into, uh, like, you have the event horizon. And, and I had, like, a, I had a, I found, and it's actually really interesting, NASA had released sound recordings. They did, like, re, like a seismic uh, recordings that they then brought into audio form that actually show what the internal structure of a planet sounds like. So the one, yeah, 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 yeah. So I found, yeah. So so the beginning of the film, there's like a big whirring noise that yeah. you see Brian walk through. That's the sound of Mars. Fucking hell. Yeah. So that's that's the track, and uh, I used that at the beginning of the film, and it was kind of supposed to signify the event horizon mm-hmm. of where like it's the point of no return for the character, yeah. and he comes into it. And, you know, it, it, it's it, the whole story. I can't really remember the whole structure the black hole thing yeah, but i got it to right, work yeah. i got it to work in, in, in that way where it represented uh how guilt affects somebody and, and brian and, actually was all right in that he was actually he's great in it yeah he's he great was in it. he was uh, there's, some, there's, some, emotion. There's, there's some really good footage i have of it where brian uh is in a bathroom in the college and he goes he's, he's there he's kind of he has a fight with a friend of his yeah. he's, he's going through this uh He's trying to come, he's trying to bring himself down, but it's the guilt that's affecting him more than that, the event that he's actually been a part of. And uh, I said to Brian, right, listen to me, right? You have to internalize all this anger that you have into this one moment, but you can't express it. That was the yeah. whole point of it. You can't express the anger and you're struggling uh, how to do it. So he's there pantsing around the room. He's there going, mm, he's there tearing the face off himself. And then there's one, uh, <laughs> there's one, there's one take we did where he punches the wall above a urinal, right? Yeah. And he, he hits us. He went, bang! And we heard, like, the internal structure of whatever was in that wall just collapse. <laughs> we just oh, heard, we heard a we, massive... Right, got what we got, right, yeah, got. that was it. That was it. We heard a massive bang. And Brian, sadly, it was a good take. That was the funny thing about it. It was a good take. But he take. just stopped it. He went out of character. Stopped, Brian stopped and went, ooh. <laughs> Imagine that was in the film. Oh, that would have been gas. That would have so, been so yeah. good. I don't know what happened inside that wall that made that sound, but like yeah. we went for another takes and we got it. We got we got a good take out of it. Fucking Brian destroyed that wall. Yeah, he did. He did. It was, it, it, there wasn't even a dent on the wall. It was just that he hit it so hard that whatever pipe or mm. ever, whatever something that was like extra shaky just mm. w- just went bling. I said that was wall. fucking hilarious. I said it was so good. Um. Yeah, so I have the last one now. It's not it's not a short film. I remember I was a now we have fucking stories from this one where I, I, I it describes me perfectly. Um you were asked to do a music video by Leanne, um this girl called Leanne, yeah, she's Kenny, a, and yeah. also um Funzo and it was called Funzo. Happy Face. And yeah, you so were asking Casey to be in it. But yes. I'll let you describe it and then I wanna I wanna tell me story of what happened on the day when yeah, I, 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 I really, know, Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I remember what happened there. Yeah. I actually remember it probably better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> I, I probably was, wasn't there for most of it. Yeah yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, like Leanne, uh, again, for my degree, like, so Kevin had the podcast to do for his project of degree. Yeah. And I had to do something, and I was chose to do a film project, as I would. They said, uh, like, go with your strengths. So I said, fuck it, I'm going to do a film project. I couldn't do a film. Because there's no way, there's no way of getting a client for a film. Mm-hmm. 
and Leanne was in my class at the time. And you know, I love Leanne. She's great. Uh, she's she's just a wonderful individual. She's very warm hearted, and she, you know, at that point we were good friends. Hmm. And she, I said to her like, have you like she had has a name with the uh, hip hop scene in Ireland. I was yeah, the Irish hip hop. Yeah. yeah, the Irish hip hop scene. I was interested in doing like a music video for a hip hop song, mm. and she was like, "Well, I've got this project here that I haven't done anything with yet, mm. uh, and we'd like to have a video for it." And I remember like her telling me Liam, her or her now husband, they got married oh, last lovely, year. Lovely. La- lovely. Uh, the summer just gone, mm. uh, but her her boyfriend at the time uh, was Liam Funzo McDermott, who had a small career. Uh, if you remember Trist, not Tristan Shield. Uh, I, uh, I know. Tierney. You know Christian Tierney? Um, no, I can't. No, I don't. I, well, he's. Uh, I, 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 well, he was a guy that like was. He's sort of. He got kind of sort of famous yeah. doing his music videos for the likes of Funzo, where they are kind of like very high production value videos mm. and you know party ends of videos. And he made them when he was like seventeen, and like now he's working with Niall Horan on Jesus. like doing photography for his tour. But uh, skip ahead. But Funzo like got big over the fact that his videos looked quite professional and they were actually yeah. quite nice. He has a lot of really good, interesting videos that really should be uh, watched more. Mm. But uh, I, uh, Leanne was like, well, I have this song and she wrote Happy Face. That was her song. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you know, they recorded together and they, you know, uh, like produced it and everything. And it was something that was there for a while and, you know, something happened to Leanne that I'm not going to go into, but yeah, you know, yeah, it, yeah, caused, no, it, okay. it caused her to kind of move uh, from this from the place that she was in, and she was doing her degree, so our music was kind of on hold for the time being. Yeah, she's like, Can you, "Do you want to do this?" And I listened to the song, and I, like, I at first I didn't realize that I could do, like, I, I'd never touched a music video before. I didn't yeah. realize that I could actually do a music video before with the ideas that I had, yeah. and she presented this pop song that is just wonderful that i just i still love to this day it's mm. uh, like it's a song where the tonal uh, the tonal quality of the music is very happy and upbeat and the content of the lyrics is the complete opposite of yeah that. you know it's it's and it's it's a great little piece of songwriting she's really good at pop songs mm. and i know i wish she'd do more mm. but her and liam uh, had this song and i was like wait fuck it i'll do the video i came to her with an idea for it and you know the idea changed over time a little bit and as i went through the motions of doing you know uh doing script redrafts for it uh doing uh, there's a different script you do for music videos where it's literally just the lyrics of the song and the visuals yeah on yeah. the side so i had to learn that format of writing i had to do the storyboards i had to do all this that and the other i brought in the lads who that i know like i'm still do friends with from college do alan the kids who's my cinematographer Stephen uh, Shaw Highland, who's the uh, our lighting, our gaffer guy. Yeah. Uh, they are, you know, they're, they're the dream team for me. Uh, we, me, him, and Steve are in a little uh, production company called Little Wagon Productions. That's where all our films are. Mm-hmm. And Happy Face was the project where we kind of cemented that relationship, where all of us together, along with Leanne and all, we just came together on a, on a subject matter that's really uh, was really interesting to me. And the point of the video was that, it, again, it's another sort of metaphorical thing where the song's called Happy Face. Mm-hmm. And the, the, the content, the lyrics is that she's, she's putting on a fake smile. Yeah. She's yeah. putting on a fake smile to pretend that, in the song, to pretend that everything is all right. Yeah, it's, it's very relatable. A lot of people can relate if they, if they watch it. I think a lot of people could relate to it. And what I came up with was the idea of uh, masks mm. uh, coming into play. But just not where, normal masks. No, no, they're paper. No. They're paper plates. It was really with, good. With, yeah, with, good. With like with makeshift smiley faces on them. Mm-hmm. Uh, what the idea of that? I don't know. I actually don't know the idea. It just came to me. and I was like, do it, do it. it was a good That's idea, it. though. It was a good idea. Yeah, it was I mean, different, it you know. Yeah, it, it did. It did. It worked. Um, she. Yeah. So the idea was that, like, I, I'm guessing they kind of went back to the whole Freudian concept of people wearing masks and all mm. that. To kind of you know mass their emotions and all. I don't know exactly. Yeah, I, I geez, that's a bit, yeah, but, but 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 my 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 teacher loved the idea because mm. she she was a, a Freudian student. Like mm. she would studied psychology, and her like main focus of our classes was psychology. Yeah. So she was like, oh yeah. So I, every time I get in there, I just talk some psycho babble about fucking yeah. Lacan or fucking the new school of psychology, and she would fucking she'd go 
yeah, yeah, it's grand. Yeah, sure, sure. What, 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 what are you trying to make here? And she never really fully understand the concept. Yeah, she didn't really understand the concept until she watched the the video and she was like, oh. <laughs> and then I, and then I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. now you got a well done, go yeah. Hey, give me that A, give me that A, full mark. <laughs> You're done. Well. Uh, yeah, give me that W right now. <laughs> so yeah. I, I, I actually put my heart and soul into the concept because I, every time I listened to the song, uh, it would build more and more. And I had the idea for a three-act story where she would have an obstacle. She would, she'd face, basically, she would face, uh, she was, the character in her video is out of a relationship and she doesn't want to feel happy. Mm. She wants to feel sad. Mm. And the, she sees all these, uh, it's kind of, uh, how to put it. She sees all these uh, world insecurities. She sees all these bad things that happen about the world. So she sees people doing drugs. That's where you came in, mm-hmm. brought back. Uh, and by the, by the way, I'll, we'll probably get to it in a minute. But like, yeah. brought, that, that that's Pat Morgan in the video. Oh fucking right, yeah. Jesus, Pat remember Morgan. that? Oh shit, we yeah. need to talk about that as yeah. well. Yeah, go on. That, that's that's Pat Morgan in the video. I wanted to kind of give a reference back to my own uh, past and stuff. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's that. So there's two junkies, and she, uh, they would then follow her. Mm. It's it's a horrific idea. It's a it's like a horror film in a way. But mm. because uh, the, the reason why it worked for me was because the song itself is these two contrasting things. So it was the world around her, even though she's witnessing all these uh, you know bad things happening with the world. Mm. The world around her was forcing her to be happy. Yeah, to kind of accept that this is the thing you've got to get used to it mm. and she's like no I can't and then it, it, it ends up being kind of forcibly put upon her and she kind of goes into a monotonous kind of it's kind of the idea where people walk past things and see things around the world and not do anything about it mm. now, that's what happens in the, in, 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 the, in, the, in the video she sees two junkies shooting up she doesn't mm. do anything about it she doesn't have any change for a homeless guy who's played mm. by Liam her husband mm. uh, she walks past it and he he then has the face on him and follows her. And then she sees someone getting beaten up. Yeah. And uh, she witnesses this horrible thing happening but doesn't do anything about it. Yeah. You know, she kind of follows the monotonous. So there's the, the two metaphors there. of the, Sorry, the full metaphor of her herself trying not to be happy. Mm. And in the world itself, uh, faking to be happy. Yeah. Trying to force her to be fake. That's, mm-hmm. that's where, it's, where it's coming from. So it's it it's it goes back to the idea again. It's kind of where I learned how good music videos work. Where they go to the heart and soul of the song. They go to the thematic purpose of the song. What's the whole what's the whole idea of the the thing all together? And then I turned it into a music video. I like it. I like the concept of it. It was really good. I did enjoy it. Um, but the day I did not enjoy. It. I didn't enjoy me day there because let me now before you say it right. I I do have a thing here right. What I was, when I was younger, I was going through a thing and I didn't know what it was, but I understand now what it was now. It was real, like really bad anxiety. It was really, and I didn't know what it was. So even getting out of my house and going on a bus, I was really like, <gasps> like that. So I was real fucking weary and so, but when we went and we met up with you guys, it was grand. And then we were on the ground. Um, I had to sit on the ground with Casey. He was Pat Morgan. I was fucking his mate. Um, yep. Get me? Um, in, in the Pat over. Morgan, in the Pat Morgan universe, in the Pat Morgan, it, it's just like Marvel. In, sh- in, in, yeah, in the shared Pat Morgan universe, Pat Morgan also turns up in the music video for Happy Face. It's all the same <laughs> universe. But it's anyway, all the same um, universe. I I remember we were on the ground and there was glass there, and it was a really rough area as well, though, wasn't it? Like we were in a corner and there was glass everywhere. And oh was, yeah, one hundred percent. And my was, hand, was, I, I, yeah. there was glass in my hand, and it was a bit deep, and it was fucking dirty, but it's. It's not, I didn't kick in until people start saying, oh, you can get this and you can yeah, get, and yeah, from the anxiety, yeah. I got pure fucking, oh, and I got lightheaded. But the good thing I did and I did like that about that is that I think it's good from a filmmaker as well as that. If anybody's on set and if anybody feels that certain way, you are straight there. Like you weren't, you were laughing as well, but come here, we all be fucking laughing. But well, for the majority of it, you were being serious. You were making sure that I didn't fucking faint, that I was getting to the, uh, I had to go somewhere and 
I was vulnerable. I was because my mm. anxiety was hitting the roof. I was going to have a fucking panic attack and I didn't know what anxiety was. So I didn't know what I was feeling. And you throughout the whole fucking thing from walking down them roads and so is that the only thing I wanted to do was get on that bus and go home because the minute I go into my house, I'll feel better again. And mm. like from all that time, you were serious and you were making sure I was okay. And that's what... That's what um that's what a good filmmaker is as well. Like you know, you just you don't care about making you, you care about making the film, but you also care about your cast and your crew as well. And that's what you showed on that day also. Yeah, I mean, like I kind of go through the uh, maybe, maybe it's just the the the, the care side of me coming through, but like I I, I was like, listen, we've, we've got what we wanted. There's a stuff we have to do, but th- there's an obstacle that comes in the way, and you always got to deal with the obstacles that come in yeah. your way with making films in general. This ha- one happened to be that, like, I remember what happened. Like, like I remember it, like, almost, again, beat for beat. Like, I remember what <laughs> yeah, happened. Yeah, you we explain there. it, because I probably didn't say it right we were We were in a lane up near Tano Street, hmm. uh, and, like, I picked a couple of lanes that we were going to shoot the film in, and they were regular spots for junkies, yeah. uh, for junkies to shoot up. So that's where I kind of got the... The re- there's a couple of reasons why. Location was another one because we were literally two seconds away from where Leanne was staying at the time. Yeah, thank God. And her, her apartment, uh, we could keep all the equipment there without it getting nicked. Like all our boxes and stuff. We could just do like gorilla stuff where we just carry what we can mm. and then leave the rest in hers. So when it came to shooting the scene with you and Casey, uh, we were in a very dodgy area because it was clearly a spot where you know why knows were there's glass bottles everywhere there's mm. people who shoot up literally when we were i think it's either we were shooting there or when we were scouting there some guy walked past us when we were shooting footage yeah. and he was like like pure dodge going oh and he, like if it was just me he probably would have like tried to f- i've had problems with that before where i was shooting stuff in an area where people get mad dodgy and mad yeah. and paranoid and yeah. he would probably would have lashed out but at that point he wasn't because there was five of us there and yeah. He saw us, went past, he's supposed to have a deal there, because he literally did a deal two seconds, like, like at the top of the road where we were, so he was just trying to get his shit and leave, yeah. but uh, I knew that it was kind of dangerous and unhygienic, yeah. I said to you, like I said to you, Anthony, because right? yeah. there was a position you were in, I said, listen, I just wanted to take a beat for a second. <laughs> Watch where your hands are, right? Yeah, you did say that. And yeah, just, and just kind of keep yourself in this position. Yeah. If you're falling back, tr- like try, like try to hold on to Casey. Don't fall back on your hands. Yeah. It's all right if you grab Casey and you wreck take. Yeah. It's all right. That means we can then, you know, just we'll just do, we'll it, do again. it again. Yeah. You know, we'll fix it up. And you didn't. <laughs> yeah. No, I didn't. <laughs> you put your hands straight in the fucking ground. The glass oh. was. You got a cut in it. A piece of glass in your hand. You're like, and it, you got up in force. You're like. Oh, that's oh, grand, grand, grand. And then <laughs> I was trying to stay so calm. I was like, I and then Alan, Alan turned to you and you went, "Oh shit!" He's like, "What happened?" I went, "I oh, was getting a bit of glass." And Alan's like, "Oh shit! Oh fuck!" And Alan, that's just Alan's reaction to things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Steve's reaction was the same. I was like, "Ah oh, shit! All right." Uh, and you better he's like, you, "I don't know." And then you started panicking. You going, "Am we gonna be all right from this?" Am yeah, we because be, I honestly right thought I have AIDS. I fucking this rap piss gone into me like. I just fucking I thought the worst things as possible, you know, and uh, yeah. yeah. Well, and that's and, and that's it. But then uh, I I was like, right, this guy is going. This guy is in crisis mode, and I've been there. <laughs> I know, I know. That's <laughs> I didn't like, know what it was. I didn't yeah, know what the panic the, attack, man. Was, man. I didn't the know what attack. it was. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and so me, you, and Casey Waldron, I tried to find that. Casey was pissing voice. himself laughing. Casey, Casey was not helping. Casey was out of everybody that was there, yeah? The lads were just shocked. They had, we all had a little giggle over it, all right? Oh, yeah, of until, course. Yeah, until, yeah. until you started freaking out, and then everybody went serious mode, except for Casey. Casey, but, but Casey, you know, Casey does have, like, you know, he has ass borders in the oak, so he doesn't fucking, like, you know, he's a bit fucking, yeah, yeah when it comes to that, so... He's very, yeah, he's very like, oh, well, this is funny. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever is funny is funny. He's fucked up in the head. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, yeah, so, and then I, I had to get you his antiseptic wipe. Uh, the, fucking, <laughs> the fucking spot was closed. Oh, my the pharmacy, God. The pharmacy was closed, and we were like, all right, fuck, I'll bring it to the ants. Yeah. Had to drag it into the ants. I was like, do you have any fucking antiseptic 
wipes or do you have any fucking like soap to clean out a fucking wound? She's like, I've got something in there. It's like, Brad, they <laughs> like basically put the true that's there. You use You're that a cunt. The hand. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then you're a grand after it. It was all right because I knew, I knew. I just needed to sit there and calm down. That's what it was. Hmm. And uh, yeah, I said it to you before. Like I said, thanks very much. I did say thanks for you. Oh, no, I did. Yeah, no, no. Yeah, because you were very was grateful. And, and to be honest, yeah. like I would, if it was, if I was in a similar scenario, I probably would have there it for somewhere where I could wash my hands as well because yeah. it's, it's you know it is hygiene and I, I we were somewhere that was very fucking murky and mm. yeah, dangerous to go and I I wouldn't have wished that to happen to anyone and particularly yeah. to have the, the reaction that they did so you know one hundred percent and working in the from working in the concert industry building stages and all that you know how dangerous a cook can be yeah on anything. So that's we always or a fucking or a fall as well. Actually, remember or a fall. I mean, like I, I, like I'm sitting here right now, and my knee is swollen up to the size of a plum at the moment. Why? Why? What happened to? Uh, I had. I I think I had an injury from the job. All right. uh, Ages ago, on my knee, because it was something that came back reoccurring all that, and I think it's had to come in the head now because of the last. (laughs) Three days of in serious fucking agony. I like, like the way I, you see the things like that, and you just you have to laugh at them. I, know, it's like, <laughs> I could be dying, but it's grand. Oh, well, I'm not dying. I know that, but like, like I, I was supposed to be over there on the couch over there. Yeah. Uh, and I was supposed to be over there doing this call. Yeah. Uh, so where it'd be more comfortable. But my the laptop for some reason just decided to not work over there and decided to work over here. So like yeah. when uh, so like I'm not in pain now. I've got it in a position where it's working perfectly. But I know that from working in that job, that's the reason why. Yeah, yeah. You know, and it's, and I've had I've, I I'm not gonna go through this. I went through this in the podcast like the week it happened. But I fell through a stage yeah. at one point during the job. I remember you. I remember. I think I saw you in person, and you showed me. Remember, we were. It was Libby Valley or something. Or you, you told me. I, I think told it was, you. I went yeah, to. Yeah. I, it was when you were working in Curry's. I told you. I yeah, went yeah, that's stage. what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I went through stage working at it, <laughs> working the Spice Girls. I went just plumbed through stage and fucking hell. I had, I had a few. I had a few bumps and bruises on me, but I was grand. I was yeah. just in shock, and I was kind of you know you don't really realize how bad shock is until you actually go through like a series and have to shock. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. Yeah, the, the the Pat Morgan situation was probably the best thing uh, to come at the continuity of that work so well because yeah, yeah. like <laughs> I, I I think I'll, I'll try and do that with other shit. Like I think I might bring Pat Morgan into the the web series eventually yeah, at some yeah. point for a little cameo. I don't want him in for a full episode. <laughs> I think I think um I remember that I, I did have like I want before we go on to the Pat Morgan um I do want to talk about the the music video because um. The first time I made tried to make a music video was for Daniel Kearney and yeah. he, he had a song and I'd done it. And the concept was of it, it was like when you think of it, you're like, oh, that's good. But like when you look at it, you go, what the fuck? But it was basically these two people and they were in a relationship. But it was like, you know, their feelings were going like away and away more. But the teddy bear represented uh, the relationship because... Uh, you'll see in it that he won the teddy bear when they first went out and then the more and more the distance in a way it keeps coming back to the teddy bear there's rips in the yeah, teddy bear it's and a, there's it's, a mo- it's a motif yeah and then he holds at the end of it um he, he lets go of the teddy bear so he's letting go of the relationship do you get me and that was my first time ever doing a, a, a music video like trying to direct it and kind of going and i fucking enjoyed it so much it was so good and i done one recently and i because it was quarantine I fucking wrote a song. I filmed it. I saw that. It was good. And I, I done it all in a day. And I fucking edited it by the night. And like, do you know what I mean? And for something, like, I think quarantine is really good. Um, Not really good, but like, like for the time now, for people like us that are creators and we were creative, that I think it, I think it's good um, that we can not just sit around doing nothing, that we, we have ideas and we're going to do something about it. Do you get me? This is our time yeah. to do that. Um, but I do want to go into your actual own little thing as well now called Marx's Movie Minis. Now, please, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that. please yeah, yeah, let's yeah. talk about it. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we already talked about, we talked about on the podcast uh, there when we recorded that episode there, it'll be out recently. Uh, it'll be out soon. Uh, but yeah, during quarantine, I've done a couple of things during the quarantine when the quarantine started because I started literally the day because I've got asthma. So I started cocooning mm. and at the day that it was called that uh, there was fucking the, there was a restriction on groups of more than a hundred or a thousand people yeah or I think it was a hundred people actually uh, and I was working the day that that happened yeah. we we did a setup 
for a, a country western thing in the three arena. Mm. Uh, we did a setup and it took two hours to do the, the, the work that we did do. And then we spent another two hours waiting to see if you finish it off. And then we spent the hour putting everything back in the truck and having something to eat. Mm. So it was, you know, roller coaster ride. And that was the last time I went back to work. That was yeah. it. Like, and I, I went home and I realized that was the reason why that they called that. And that was like, I went through the motions then of, well, let's see what I have to watch. And so I watched, watched over, uh, I watched Tiger King eventually. It, yeah. We can talk about that if you want after eh, this. No, 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 I did a review on it. <laughs> Read my review on it. It's, right. it's all there. <laughs> yeah, I'll, get, I'll get people because I will, I will link everything down below anyway so people, mm-hmm. people will go check it out. Yeah, Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, but yeah, the movie minis, uh, so the, the movie minis came about because when the, the quarantine came in, that mm-hmm. like, well, this is a dangerous fucking thing now. You need to not go outside. Yeah. Uh, me and Kevin decided to put it on hold and we thought well we have a couple of episodes in the can we'll see what happens to the quarantine we might give it a break of a couple of weeks and then we'll come back to it that didn't like necessarily happen that way Kevin uh, is still an essential worker and at the time uh, before we started recording again he was uh, working 9 to 5 because he's the only person in the building so he was doing a couple of days a week he was working hard and he was resting the other days and he was trying to find out new ways instead of using something like Zoom mm. because he, you know, he wants a good sound quality because we don't do video, we do yeah. just audio. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so we're got, so I just came about them the other, the other, like last week. I was like, can we just do a podcast? Can mm. we just do it? Yeah. He's like, yeah, fuck it. Fuck it, we'll do it. Uh, so we have that. We usually do two episodes in a row, so we're, we're going to wait uh, do a second one and maybe a third before we actually go ahead with yeah. uh, a full uh, episode. But yeah, th- so we did that. And then whilst w- I was waiting for us to get back online with the podcast, uh, I started, I said, listen, I did a couple of reviews. I did, I did write a couple of film reviews in the past for uh, a couple of small publications that were never used. Mm. So I said, fuck it, I like film, I know how it works, uh, Like people know from the, co- the podcast how, how fucking knowledgeable I am, so I'll just do a couple of reviews a week, or a review a week, where I, instead of carrying, instead of doing nothing and being like completely radio silent on mm. the podcast one, I'll do, I'll just pick up the slack for the time being. And yeah. that turned into Max Movies, Kevin came up with a name. Not me. Kevin was the one we were like, when I put this video, he's like, oh yeah, Marx's movie minis. And I was like, why are you so good at this? Because <laughs> he came up with the movie minute as well. He's the one that came up with the, he, like, the, the podcast came out of our natural format and ways of like, well, I'd come out with a line of like, oh, watch this film this week. And, or he'd come out with something similar. Uh, and that's how the format came. And they were on Marx's movie minis. And I have, I've developed my own format for that as well, where I introduced the show. I do the review, there's jokes placed in between it, and then the end of I end with a meme, which is a screenshot from the film, or whatever I watched, or whatever subject matter I want to fucking yeah. talk about, and I just give it a meme at the end. Mm. So that's, that's how Marx's movie minis works. Uh, now, I'm up, now, instead of watching one film, or just one thing a week, I have to watch two, because now we're going back to do a podcast. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the, the movie minute is gone from the podcast for the time being, because we're only trying to, we're trying to do short episodes with the podcast on mm. Zoom. Until we can get a proper format, so, uh, until we can get a proper rhythm sorted out, and then maybe we'll go back to it. regular programming. Mm. But we'd like to have you on the show now, and I've only had, uh, like I've only thought about it now. Yeah, I think I was trying to think what the, what could we review on the show with you? Because usually if we have a guest on. Yeah, well, if you want, you could give me some films to watch, and I'll sit down and watch them if you want. Or no, yeah. I have an idea. Right. We'll review Dead or Alive. Oh dear lord, that's just a slagging match right in the happen. We will review Dead or Alive oh, because god. Kevin's never seen Dead or Alive. Come here. Oh my god, what the fuck do I look like? I look like Sid the Sloth <laughs> when I do that. Um, pine cones. Um, fucking, come here, that, come here. You thought he was sitting through that film and you're like, uh, of the fucking um, emoji film going, what the fuck I is think this? It, I think you like that. it. I think you like it. Oh, I'll be honest. I think uh, you like it, yeah. we, we can do it if you want. I, um, yeah. I, I didn't know if you would have guests. I thought it was just you as two, you know. No, we had, we had a guest though. We had uh, Dylan Burgess Grant, a good friend of ours, on. Uh, mm-hmm. He reviewed uh, X-Men Origins Wolverine and we were planning, before the, the lockdown happened, we were planning to have 
another friend of mine on from work. Uh, her name is her stage name is JJ Small. She's a musician, and we had the the episode all planned out and everything ready to go. But then the lockdown happened, and that was it. That was basically it. Yeah. She 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 went home uh, to the countryside. Uh, Kevin again was pumped up by work, and I was here just doing the movie minis. So. Mm. It's good though. I what I like about Zoom is because when I started making this podcast a year ago and I wasn't serious about it. Like I just wanted to do the put out content. But then this year I start I made this this channel on January fifteenth of this year and I my dad worked somewhere so I was able to get a room for an hour and I had to pay a tenth euro. So I, I got a guest on that comes up. But I think it's much better in here because I said it before on the podcast as well as that people are comfortable in their own homes and their own space. You get me when they're, when they're doing it through this. And um, it's just, I think it's just much better because you can get more guests because I don't, I don't think a lot of people would like travel out just to do an hour. They're not getting paid for anything. So I think it's, I think Zoom is really good for podcasts at the moment, um, in my opinion. Um, yeah. But, well, I mean, yeah. I mean, I, I've seen that you've kind of hit your stride with it. Yeah, I see that you, you know, you've got a good again. You've got a good rhythm with stuff, so you're, you you've got your schedule and worked out. Uh, I've watched a couple of your episodes now. Uh, I watched honor. the episode. That's a fucking honor. I, I, I didn't I watch them. Watch them. <laughs> a lot of people watch them. What are you talking about? No, I but I didn't them. think like right. We're gonna sit down and listen to this fucking gob show that we're going to. Yeah. Yeah. And well, what, I thought the same I thing. About it, what I learned about it is is that the more you do it and the more consistent you are, with it, like right now. This podcast right now is probably the most naturally flowing podcast I've done. It's mm. just like having a conversation on FaceTime and it's not recording. It doesn't imagine imagine all this wasn't recording. I'd fucking I'd that'd be funny. Well, anyway, we'd have, to, we'd no. have to do it again. Oh, imagine and we're there <laughs> and we're there like so. Tell me about the film that I've never heard yeah, of. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, but this this is really good and I, I I really do enjoy this episode. It's really good. It's just really natural and um, for the likes of that. But what we, what were you going to say there before I interrupted you? Uh, well, that's the thing. Like when we when we started the podcast, when me and Kevin started the podcast, when I wouldn't actually listen over to the episodes, yeah, uh, because I, you know, I was embarrassed a little, you know, and I would talk. I still talk some bullshit on the fucking podcast. Fuck, that's like, what people want to listen to, man. Yeah, you know, I still talk some fucking bullshit, and you know, I get caught out in the bullshit sometimes where I say something and I, I think it's fact that people are like, uh, no, you're wrong. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. You know, I, I've kind of gotten over that myself where like I can now listen to an episode of my own podcast and realize whether it was a good podcast mm. or a shit podcast. And yeah. usually, Mine's the all right because eh, uh, I didn't have high expectations. So it's not the best, the but right. it's not the worst. It's just the all right. Get me so that's where I came yeah, yeah. for that. Like, so. I, 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 and that's, a, that's an all right name. Yeah, you know yourself. Yeah. <laughs> but no, but like uh, well, from what I've seen uh, with this, with the trajectory that you're taking the show is that you've kind of created your own internal community you haven't intended for it and that's probably the best thing about it because it was something that happened naturally yeah where you at the beginning i could see that like yeah i even someone like i remember watching an episode of your podcast where there was no sound or there was no like really good sound on it yeah yeah you know, and like and i'm like uh, and i was going well maybe it's baby steps maybe or maybe he'll, you know maybe he'll try to tell maybe he won't i don't know wh- yeah. which direction he's gonna go with. i don't know where it's gonna go and then you asked me to be on it mm. uh before the lockdown yeah, and then uh, that kind of went away for a bit, and I was happy when you said Do you want to be on the podcast eventually. Yeah, because uh, I'd seen that the quality it's of not, not only of uh, your way of doing things, your way of presenting, your way of going through things, mm. but also like the, the quality of the guest on that the guest would actually you know they would be involved. And you had your little co-host there, and you were developing a system where everything mm. would work. Yeah, you know. So I'm happy to see it reach thus far, and I'm yeah. I'm happy to see it grow in it because it's it you know I'm sure my podcast will grow in some way yeah. or another with the way that we're doing things on Zoom now. We'll probably have more guests on. Mm. We'll probably have you know probably a switch up a format because of the way we're doing things. Yeah, uh, and I don't know whether you know we change it where we'll go back to using the normal format of things. You know, it seems a lot more complicated to have a guest on when we're in Kevin's house. Mm. In his, uh, in his like in his spare room, doing the podcast, uh, but also, and I've got to say this, there is a human factor involved when doing the podcast the way that me and Kevin did do it because we bounce off each other a lot better. Yeah. Then we would be doing a Zoom call. Like this is good. What we're doing is good. Yeah. But yeah. sometimes uh, it's better having the two people in the room because there's a little bit more 
I understand. Yeah, you know I mean? understand. Yeah, I understand where you're coming from. And like you know yourself, I started a YouTube channel five years ago, and I've just lost love with it. I just don't. I don't want it. Do you get me? And when I started doing this, and I got real serious about it, I got. I have the. I had this. I have the same feeling now that I did when I started that. Do you get me? Yeah. And it's just. Mm-hmm. I, I. I just really want to focus on this right now what what that other channel now is just for live streams because i done what i could with it it's five years and that's the potential i can get this i think that this is a new not a new thing but a lot of people are starting podcasts now you now you get you get me like and it yeah. depends on the person you know if they're interested in, if they get an interest and that's what i want i thought as i said in all my podcasts that people out there right now that are listening that if they follow the pod, podcast regularly that i don't just get on anybody i get on someone that's creative someone that's doing something like a musician actor filmmaker you get me i want someone mm-hmm. that would be interesting i want i want to make this podcast because this podcast I want to learn from other people as well. This is for uh, this is for learning for me, and also anybody that's watching will learn as well. So that's my concept of the podcast, you know. Yeah, that's 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 great. I mean, like it's, it's a vocation. Like at least you're putting in the effort. Uh, a lot of people probably wouldn't. A lot of the podcasts that come up now aren't probably gonna last. You know, yeah. After this, yeah. Uh, yeah and it's funny because me and Kevin kind of made a joke where we when we left, we kind of we took our hiatus. A couple of months ago, for the podcast, there was nobody watching podcasts except for the, the, the marketplace flooded ones. You know, there was a podcast a week, and every single second one was going down. Yeah. Every second one was shy. Every fourth one was shy, and then it did just happened. And now the market's full on top of everything, and we're only coming back into the game with a hundred and so episodes. Yeah. In this new world, you so know, good that you're so consistent. Where like 120, yeah, 120 22. episodes is so. Yeah. It's so good. Like I'm, I think that like in my head, I think I need to have three guests. Like I need to, like I'm gonna try. To, like I try to do someone in the morning, someone in the evening, Monday to Friday. But it's hard. I, to I get try to do someone in the morning, someone in the evening as well. It doesn't yeah. always work it's, out. You it's know? so hard. But I, I have. That was like, a sex five joke, by the way. That was a sex joke, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I, have, I have about five people coming on this week. So that's that. If I do three podcasts a week, that's two episodes. Do you get me? Like that's. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? Like that's an yep. that's a week and a half of episodes, and um, the podcast. I what this will be well into the fifties now. This will probably be fifty four. I don't know which one number it is, but mm-hmm. I had Sir Steve O'Timidy on. I was able to get him on for a podcast, and I was like, "What the fuck?" And we were able to talk and listen, and it was it was good. I wish I could do it a bit better, but yeah, again, you know, the likes of me and yourself, you'd criticize yourself. You you know that you could do more, you could do better, and you'd always criticize yourself. Um, so that's just with me anyway so but um, I'm, I'm glad that I kind of took this route now and went down this route um, and done podcasting yeah yeah I mean it's good it's good uh, I mean as I said at the beginning of this I didn't really see it like not, not working out but I didn't really see myself being the co-host of something that's consistently on yeah. every yeah. week but I enjoy it mm. uh, I, I really missed it when we weren't doing it and it's, it's kind of like a meme now where me and Kevin's last episode was Contagion, which is the film that's yeah, I, basically, I, 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 it's basically yeah, the coronavirus. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically that's what happened. so good, isn't it? And we all went missing. Me and him went missing. Like, uh, it got us. It got us, guys. Yeah. You know? Oh, shit. Crap. But, yeah, that's that, that was a situation where, you know, we just finished it up, and we decided, I, I wanted to come back, and he was anchoring to come back. And the episode that we did, it's uh, spoilers. It's on community. Don't tell anybody. Oh, shit. Yeah, uh, we did an episode on that, and uh, we're gonna do another episode. We're gonna record on Sundays now. We're gonna, as I said, get, get a few in the can and then re- release them now. They're gonna be called uh, they're, they're gonna be called. I think they're called nostalgia minis mm. with home main. Yeah, uh, and then when we want to get people on, we'll probably go back to the original format. Yeah. Well, I'm so. I'm I'm interested. If you want, I'm in, so interested in being a guest. I fucking. I will. I, I always look for new podcasts to listen to, and I'm I'm def, I'm not I'm not just saying this because we're recording. I'm being dead serious that I I I'm thinking of literally going back to number one and just fucking listening to them. Do you get me? Even when I'm Aww. on walks and so so uh, like that. But we're gonna get into the last segment now. Usually now, I don't you know what to, you like. You might have to split this podcast up into two parts. I don't we've know. Been talking, we've been talking for like an hour and a half now. This is probably the longest podcast, and I fucking love it. It's great. 
Um, you know what I mean? I think, I think it's going to have to be a part one and part two because this is your life, Anthony. <laughs> this is your life we're talking about. Come here, Zoom is, so, Zoom is so easy. It's just fucking <laughs> cut it. It's so good. But guys, we're going to get into the last segment now and this is Ghost Stories. Oh, scary. Now, Marcus, I know you probably don't fucking give a shit, right? But I've been doing this a good few podcasts and uh, people had stories and some people don't, but I find it an interesting topic to talk about. So I have two questions for you. One, do you believe in the afterlife or so like that? And two, um, do you have any stories you can tell me? And I know you're probably looking at me going, listen, buddy, this is bullshit. Well, I want, I want, it, I want to know. Let us, let us know. Listen, chief. <laughs> <laughs> listen, you dumbass motherfucker. Uh, well, personally, I don't, I don't really know if I believe in the afterlife as a whole. I don't really believe in ghosts. I'm not... I, I, I don't think it. I don't think it's real. I think yeah. that we just die. You die and you're dead. That, that's yeah. it. Like, I don't, I don't, but there might be. I don't know. See, I don't know everything. Hmm. Eh, it might be. You know. <laughs> I don't. I don't. If the, I just think if there is one for humans, there has to be one for every other thing that's died. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like in the kind of way that the Hindus believe that you become another being when you die, like you become an animal or a yeah. tree or a fucking reincarnation or whatever. Yeah, yeah it's reincarnation. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so there's that. Uh, I do. I think that goes to it. That's mm, probably not. So, yeah. but I do have two separate stories. That Please, we're... Marcus. Thank you fucking so much. Thank you. I love listening. I just love it. So go one, on. One wasn't really ghosts, and I'll, it's kind of more of a wholesome, kind of more heartfelt thing. I'll leave that till the end. Right. But uh, the first one was when I, I think I was in, I was in somewhere in Wexford. I think. I think it was in somewhere in the countryside. Uh, near a seaside town on a little holiday trip. It was me, my mum, and uh, like a bunch of my mum's friends and their kids and all that. We rented a house in Wexford and we all stayed there for about, I think it was like a weekend or so. Uh, and there was a small pub that was like a two minute walk away from the house. And I remember, I really missed the, I, I remember the trip very well. It was a great trip. And I think it was the first time I've ever seen like a full night sky. You know, like a, like so, no no uh, yeah. light pollution. There was just stars everywhere. Mm-hmm. It was that far into the countryside. Like, but anyways, we were in this pub, and it's a very old timey, you know, gentleman's pub. You know, it's a it's it's the local boozer. It's where people have gone to for generations upon generations. If they've been died in this town, you know, uh, it was built. It was once built, you know, by a hand by people, and now it's mm-hmm. been a bit more modernized. Now. We go in there one night, and I think it was the, st- the last night that we were supposed to be. It's always the fucking last night, isn't it's it? It's always the last it's night. Always the it's fucking always the last night. night. And uh, I, you know, we, I was drunk on the fizzy drinks because mm-hmm. <laughs> I was about I was about fourteen. I still uh, do that. <laughs> uh, and you know, my mother and her, her friends they weren't drunk. They were just you know, part you know, party happy, happy. You know, yeah. having a good time. They're enjoying yeah. themselves. And. We went, uh, we were just getting ready to go. We are like, right, before we go, let's, we're all going to go to the Jacks and fucking get in there. Because it's a bit of a walk back. Like when mm. I say it's right next to the place, it wasn't actually. Like it's countryside next to. You know uh, I mean? Yeah, yeah. That could be you know what I mean? It's, like it's, it's where a two-minute walk is technically a 20-minute walk, but for cold seats, it's longer. <laughs> Sorry, shorter. Yeah. You know? So they've longer legs or they they're, they're, walk on their hands or whatever. Big powerhouse walk, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I think they're apes. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> but... Uh, so we all kind of go separate ways, and uh, for some reason, there's a there's an upper deck as well to the to the it's a two decker, the fuck I call it, a pub, mm. and there's a, a place that the upstairs where they kind of have like social parties and all that. But there was nothing on during this time, and we went out to the toilets. And my mother didn't didn't know where the toilets was. She went up the stairs, and her friend followed her, mm. and I. All I could hear before I went into the bathroom was Wah! just a mad big scream out, out of the two of them. They came, yeah. they came running down the stairs. And my ma, to this day, she still stands by it. Yeah. She states that she was on the, the, the stairs and like she wasn't like too like drunk enough to be like visualizing it in her head. I mean, all in her head. Like. Yeah. So she saw, so she believed she saw uh, a very tall man standing in front of her on the yeah. stairs yeah. and all she could see was like all she could see properly she could see up to his, like the bottom of his torso yeah and but she could see his legs and his shoes and his his, his 
uh, he had like these pinstripe trousers on, like these really old 1940s, yeah. you know, smoking jacket type trousers on. Yeah. And he had lovely polished shoes. She said they, they had like there. You could see her, she could see her face in them, but they're that Fuck. closely polished. Yeah. yeah. She saw this like, and it wasn't the top of the stairs. It was like kind of midway on the staircase. She could see them, hmm. and she spotted them. She spotted them for two seconds, and she pelted the down the Fuck. <laughs> Uh, and she still stands to this day. She said she saw her. Fuck. She saw this guy, uh, and they talked to the management then afterwards, and he said that that's not the first time that's happened to them. Oh and shit! It's not. It's not the first uh, sighting of a similar person. Holy on, shit! On the stairs, so the, the, like the place has been around since the eighteen hundreds. I fucking love and stories like this. Yeah, and people have seen like people have so been seeing uh, like girls in like white. Uh, puffy dresses you know with massive skirts on them, like communion dresses mm-hmm. but yeah this, they've said the scene walking the corridors or or upstairs in that little party area with the lights around jesus christ that's so that's the mad. that's the scary one okay right that's the scary one the other one was kind of a wholesome it's kind of a sad one mm. and it's not really a ghost story it's just something that kind of happened where you know something happened two things happened at the same time mm. where you can say the coincidence well, I, in this case, I would like to believe that they're not. Mm. You know, and this is kind of a personal story. So, if anybody's trolling, I I want to turn off that switch for a second, guys. Okay, <laughs> yeah. you can go back to trolling after I'm done this. You know what I mean? Like, make fun of my red shirt, whatever you want, my beard. Go to, just stuff for. A you second, can right? fucking grow a beard. This is my attempt of growing a beard for the past three, four years. Just slow yourself, right? I know, I know the head, the haircut is dead. I know that the face is dead. Just, just let me have this one, all right? Let me have this round. Uh. So I remember uh, it was near the junior cert time. So I was about 13. And actually, it was, no, it was junior cert because I just came back for my, la- from my second to last exam. Mm. And my grandmother was very ill in hospital. And uh, I saw her sister who lives at the road from the school, her, my, my great aunt. Mm. Uh, she stopped and said, listen, uh, I'm going to the hospital to see and it's not looking good. Uh, I, I, we don't think she's going to come out of this one. I said, okay, all right, fair enough. And uh, I was walking up the road, not long after, and I got a phone call from Ash, like, i got to go to the hospital. Your, your grandma's dying. That's, that's yeah. it. She's going to die. Uh, yeah. And I, you know, I, I, it was, I'd i never taken grief before. Yeah. Uh, that hurt. And I saw my cousin, uh, who was a little older than me, and he was kind of, he's the big man. He's, he's four kids now. Yeah. <laughs> so he's that he's big mama for he's, big, he's the big daddy now. Yeah, big daddy. Uh, but but at the point there, he was kind of like you know one of the one of the lads, one of the you know oh yeah sit in the front garden, you know yeah. smoke a few joints with the lads, you know <laughs> hands down the yeah. trousers, yeah hands down the trousers. They're, they're wearing all de- like dirty Converse and fucking Nike and. You yeah. know they have their their uh, trousers have questionable green stains <laughs> all over them. You know, and they spat a lot. I remember that they spit a lot in the garden. Yeah. That seems to be a thing yeah. every two seconds. Uh, you know, <laughs> but they're looking at videos and like, "Have you played the new Call of Duty? Yeah, boys, bleeding whopper, boys. Yeah, bleeding whopper. Yeah." <laughs> so, uh, I was in the garden just talking. I was like, "Did you hear about uh, that and all that?" He was like, uh, "Yeah, yeah, yeah, no." Heard about it, yeah. Look, you know, he's trying to be the big man. From the yeah, 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 yeah. But I got a phone call uh, to say she died. Yeah. And I got the phone call, and there's my mother on your line, so she's gone. And I was like, okay. Mm. And it was a very sad moment for, for me, and it was a very sad moment for him, I think. But I think he's just putting it on for his yeah. friends because it did come back to him later on in life that, you know, mm. it did hit him hard. Mm. Uh, but he was there in front of all his friends. He's like, yeah, no. I kind of knew what was going to happen but as oh, we were God. both having this moment where I was like I, I thought he was being a bit too selfish in the moment mm. uh, it, the heavens opened right. when I say the heavens opened I mean like, like the clouds part like it was it, like it was cloudy but it was like an Irish cloudy for the whole day like it, it looked yeah. like it was going to, you know the, the Irish like it looks like it's going to rain but it never does it just yeah, looks yeah, yeah. yeah. and it wasn't actually expected to rain for the whole day but the skies opened the sun mm. opened with it and all this rain started coming down all at once and it was like heavy like it was like massive like monsoon like fucking yeah. rain yeah. and then it just ceased it just stopped hmm. it was there for, for it was about 20 to 25 seconds of just straight rain and it just stopped the sun instant. was out then after that it was instant 
So it started to rain and then the sun was out and it was splitting in the skies and it was a beautiful day. Mm. And that's and that was like that was kind of like it happened literally after I put the phone down to my mother. My dad told me that oh, she God. died Jeez. and that she was gone. Now again, I'm not superstitious and I'm not, you yeah. know, I don't believe in the afterlife really. But yeah. if there's anything that could have made me believe that yeah. there, there was something there at that moment told me. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, I, for for you, even rem- obviously to remember that, like you know, but even for you to even tell that story is is really good as well, you know, um, because I I do I find it so interesting, um, if people have stories now, even if they don't believe and all this that they everybody has a story that they can't explain. There's something that they can't explain, and it's it's good, you know, um, but um, right. So I have one more question for you. Um, this is a new one for filmmakers. You're an I- you're an Irish filmmaker, so this will be a good one. Um, yeah. Quick question, right? Between the three, these three films, the most iconic films that I think is most three I- Irish iconic films, uh, the Snapper, the Van, and the Commitments. Which would be our favorite one out of all? Commitments, easy. Sir Steve O'Timidy said the same thing. He said the Commitments. Uh, I mean, like the Van is funny. Mm. The snapper is funny and it's it has classic. It's and has and has good like Colomini's great in it. And yeah. I've been watching Star Trek, uh, the the Next Generation and Deep Space Nine there recently, and he's in it. He's in it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in. It. He plays Chief O'Brien in it, yeah. and he's fucking. I, I like. He's hilarious. And I, I, every time I see him, on it, I just think back to Roddy Doyle's the, yeah. the Facebook page, Roddy Doyle's Star Trek, where it's him and his wife, and he's like, "Oh fuck, we kill a point." <laughs> she's like if they do all this bleeding house like, get off me bleeding black woman Jesus Christ yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like there'll be moments in the show where I wish he'd just say oh, oh Jesus yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean like, Jesus yeah yeah, yeah. so uh, yeah uh, like there's, the snapper does have those moments in it and it is uh, it's, you know Brendan Gleeson's in it as well in one of his earlier roles mm. I really like the snapper and it's directed by it's directed by Stephen Frears, British director as well. Mm. Uh, it's fine. It's a good film. It's you know it's fun. It's mm. a fun film, yeah. but it's not brilliant. Yeah. And the commitments is brilliant. Yeah. The commitment yeah. the commitments from like start to finish is a fucking bonus. It's iconic. Classic. Yeah. It's it really iconic. is because it's 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 the kind of it's the coming together of things where it's you know Roddy Doyle. It's not the pure Roddy Doyle take on the story. Mm. Like Roddy Doyle writes in a very kind of lyrical, uh, not lyrical, in a very uh, to the point sort of way, where you know it's more like a more like a screwball comedy, yeah. and the drama will come out as other specific places. The commitments is uh, this type of drama that where the comedy just comes out of natural, like mm. naturalism, out of the natural feeling of the world around and the mm. characters, the world around the characters. That's where that comedy comes from. And I haven't seen it done any better by an Irish person since, yeah. oddly enough. Uh, it's a sad thing because Alan Parker directed that film. Oh, <laughs> speaking of the commitments, uh, you know what? Uh, you don't notice, but I, I worked with your man who plays Jimmy Rabbit. Fuck off. Yeah. What the fuck? Yeah, yeah I worked with Jimmy Rabbit, yeah. Jesus. The guy, Robert, whatever his name is, yeah. What was that like? What was that like when you met him? Oh, right, and I say. Yeah. No, <laughs> no, no. All right, we leave, so we oh, leave right, it. We leave it. But I will say that uh, he, he talks about Alan Parker. He talked about commitments and he talked about Alan Parker for a bit. Yeah. And the insights that got out of Alan Parker and you know the way that he works on a set it was interesting. Hmm. Uh, he was called Parky on the Parky. set of the film. Uh, they called him that. But yeah, like uh, Alan, Alan Parker directed commitments. And it's it definitely shows because he's definitely a filmmaker with. He was, you know, he's a filmmaker with. Tremendous skill. He directed mm. a bunch of films before the commitments, but his favorite is the commitments. Mm. His favorite is, is working the commitments and this kind of. It's a raw story. It's just a raw story where uh, this unlikely group of people do this unlikely group of things in the most unlikely place. Yeah, you know, yeah. and that's what I love about it. Uh, I, I love the music as well. I have the soundtrack upstairs on mm. vinyl. Yeah. You know, I have an original copy of it, and yeah, it's you know. I, you learn. I learned a lot about soul music from the film as well. The dark end of the streets, a fucking class song, whichever version of it you listen to. Yeah. Mm. And ride around Sally, and yeah, and uh, it was like, you know, this beginning point for a lot of other actress, uh, actors and actresses. Uh, for the age, Glenn Hansen's in it. You know, he, he's out once. Yeah, you know, Glenn Hansen. Don't think I know. Don't think I know. Yeah, that song. Once I don't know you. 
Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Him, yeah. Once he's the lead singer out of that. He wrote that song for once and all, but he's in the commitments. Mm. Uh, so I'd say the commitments. Yeah. I want to say it's the best Irish film ever made. No. No. But the best film about. Out of them three, you'd pick. Out of those three, I would. Uh, what would be the best Irish film ever made for me? Uh, Kisses is a great film. I haven't seen it. I know. I always wanted to watch it. Kisses I always wanted to watch it. I actually, again, I know I, I, I have one of the actors out of the film uh, drinks in a pub. He's out of Fair City as well. But he <laughs> drinks in the pub with one of the one of, uh, one of a family member of mine. He's, he's a local and that. You know, I've talked to him about Kisses before and yeah. he, he had a lot of great stories about that. Uh, Michael Inside is probably one of the That's best. That's a really films good ever. film. I really uh, enjoyed I'll be that. honest. I think, and probably, I say this now because it's coming out of my mouth because I watched it and I feel like out of that Michael Inside, very close to being the top Irish made Irish set thing yeah. I've ever seen in my life. And it's the Roddy Doyle film as well. So I think you should put this in into the into the list. Yeah. Rosie. Rosie. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen Rosie. it. I watch it. A good Rosie. Yet. It is it is one of the greatest Irish films ever made, I hands yeah. down. And I, I kinda of scoffed at it when it came out because you know there was so much hub up about it but it actually didn't go anywhere in the end hmm. you know people were just hyping up the hype and then you know, it actually didn't do that well oh, shit, no way. Uh, but it was it was big it was big here but it didn't actually make it anywhere else hmm. and it kind of Rosie is the, the perfect example of how a domestic film market uh, never really supported its own uh, past the point of just giving it a courtesy yeah. uh, I fully recommend Michael Inside and uh, Rosie they're two hmm. Like they've only been out in the last two years, mm. but they're two of the best Irish movies ever made, and they're they're the only two Irish films that I've seen that give me hope for the future. Yeah. So, if anything that we can say about it, mm. you know, what I mean, like if we yeah. come at it hard, I think that there's a generation of filmmakers there still that can do it. Yeah. I just hope that there's there's things there are obstacles in the way because we're working class because we have uh, you know not a lot of money and not a lot of backing, mm. you know, even. The guy who directed Rosie, he has made he made a film in Cuba before that that was massive. Yeah. Uh, that was pretty big about a uh, Cuban uh, drag queen. I can't remember what it's called. I think it's called Viva is the name of the movie. Uh, mm-hmm. The guy who directed Rosie, and I, I, he had to make that, and he's been making films for ten years before he made that and big. The guy who directed Michael Inside teaches in Clasha Dulig in Kulak. Yeah. Fuck. Okay. Uh, and he's a uh, He's not a he's not a working class director either. Yeah. So there are very few Irish working class directors. You know, John Connors mm. is another. Uh, like he's a working class director, lives in Finglas and all that. But his work, to me, doesn't show any mm. high amounts of quality involved. Yeah. Uh, you know, even though I know people that have been <laughs> that have been in his productions as well. Like, mm. uh, but yeah, I, I I think that there's a generation there that is willing to take the leap, if only. The support networks were there. Yeah, you know. Yeah, uh, you can't really make a living for filmmaking in Ireland. You can't make a living in general now, but even no. before the lockdown happened, you can't make a living in film in Ireland. Uh, all I can say to people that are trying to start out is that, like, first off, if you know, if you have your parameters set, you have your craft set, mm. and you have your way of film thinking set. Those, those are the important things. They're, they're, they're the things that make you you. Your own tropes, your own traits comes out in the work you realize that either by making the film or by making like watching over your own stuff or reading your own stuff but to realize this is your style yeah have that and then have yourself like you have have yourself a crew yeah yeah have yourself a, 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 that that support network always works and then the only way that you're going to do it and i'm i found finding that out now where i'm, I'm 24 years old I, I I need to do something now. Yeah. Otherwise, I won't do it. Yeah. And that's where taking the lead comes into it. And I know people who didn't make their first feature film until they're 26, 27, and they wish they'd done it beforehand. Yeah. They wish they'd jumped ahead, even if it costs them, even if they're in debt for a bit for a while. You know, mm. even cost them a huge amount of money. They wish they'd done it. Yeah. Uh, so there's that. And uh, yeah, basically that's uh, that's that's all I got to say. You've got to take the lead. Yeah, that's great. Uh, and there's a lot of filmmakers that you know are quite possibly people that are willing to take the lead. I mm. will mention that there are a couple of filmmakers out there that uh, 
I that I have to give a shout out to. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a film called The New Music. The new uh, music. A friend of mine, uh, Killian. Yeah. And uh, his girlfriend, his girlfriend is the director of the film. Yeah. Uh, there, I saw it. It was shown in the IFI in February, just before the the shit with Corona came in. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's like let's say this. It's not. It's kind of like a commitment desk story. Uh, it's not like the best. It's not like the the, the best quality movie, yeah. but it, you know, it's baby steps. But I can see that the film is made with a lot of love. Yeah, I can see it's made with someone who, you know, has a passion for the subject matter, which is uh, independent music. Mm-hmm. And I I think it should be watched by as much as possible or supported by as much yeah. as possible I, because I, of yeah. Yeah. And it's also about a guy with uh, early onset uh, Parkinson's. As well. Yeah, yeah. The the kid now. There's a kid in that. His name is Devlin O'Brien, and I made a short film that won't be coming out until Christmas time because it's more related to Christmas. It's called This Christmas, and he the kid the kid that's in that film stars in my short film. And if you want, is that the, one, is that the one you sent to me? Is it This Christmas? Is it, yeah, so the, it's about the, the kid. Uh, but the kid that I'm not going to spoil the story, but it's like. Yeah. It, it's it, the one where they're walking around. It's the one where the kids walking around town, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, so yeah that's yeah. the kid from that, and he's been in. Oh, a lot of oh yeah, yeah, so yeah. He, he's in that, so it was really good um, to work with him. He's re- he's really fucking good. He is really fucking good. He can. It's just he knows how to show emotion and so on. He's he's real fucking passionate about it as well. But um, come here, we're doing this about two hours now, basically. It, and two parts. Come here, I'd sit here two and talk parter. for hours. I'd I'd split, sit here and talk for fucking split, hours. Split into two parts. Go on. I'll I'll I'll, I'll see if I split into two parts. I could even do could, it one in the morning, could, one in the evening, or so. Tomorrow. Well, no, because like I say, you can do it like one. You can do the whole week as our our podcast and one or two parts. Yeah. 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 And then uh, that'll give you more time to build up a, yeah, a roster I have more in the can for your that's own true, yeah that's true so you, have, so you split this into like into one hour parts each mm-hmm. so you have one come out uh, where a normal one will come out and the next one that will come out will be the second part yeah, it's just a suggestion but if you don't yeah, do no, it I'm going to break yeah. your leg <laughs> I'm going to break your fucking leg right but come here man fucking God on his truths thanks so much for you know uh, coming on and stuff and I know that like you probably if someone gives you a compliment, you're like, "Oh, fuck off, you bastard!" But I, I have to say it, sure. and I said it, I said it in the other podcasts. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be making films. I wouldn't yep. have a passion in this. So you're literally people say they have mentors, and literally you're my fucking mentor and stuff like that as well. And even though you're oh, like, oh, man, I didn't even know what I was doing, like or whatever. You're the one that showed me how to do it. So. It's fake it till you of... make it, baby. Fake it till you make it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, um, I just want to say thanks so much, man, for helping me out through the years that we've done it. And I, I did enjoy mm-hmm. making Dead or Alive. It was, so, it was probably the most funnest thing I've ever fucking done during film or so. And um, yeah, for the likes of that. But is there anything you'd like to plug um, before uh, we go? I mean, I think we plugged everything. You yeah. know, listen to Nostalgia Horrors. We're on SoundCloud, Stitcher, Spotify, uh, YouTube, uh, Nostalgia Horrors, and Facebook is a sketchtacular. Mm-hmm. Give us give the movie minutes a read if you can. You know, if you like the stuff that I, I review, give it a watch. You know, there's some mm-hmm. stuff there that people wouldn't know. Yeah. That's all I can really say. Perfect. Well, um, yeah, man. Thanks again for coming on, guys. Thanks for watching another episode of the podcast, guys. And remember, it's not the best podcast, but it's not the worst podcast. It's just an alright podcast, no, guys. No, thanks no, so much no, for watching. No, it's it's the worst. It's the worst. <laughs> it's alright, boys. Alright, uh, guys. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll chat to you next time. Goodbye.